and Michael Remus. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to a uh, huge episode of Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Heading into the game of the year tonight at Canada Life Center between the Winnipeg Jets and the Calgary Flames. Andrew Patterson and Michael Remus with you. We've got a lot coming up on tonight's game. We will head to Calgary Find out what the heck happened to the Flames last night, losing at home to the Chicago Blackhawks before hitting the uh, the, um, the flight to Winnipeg with Pat Steinberg, the host of Flames Talk, and then Murata Tesh of The Athletic, who's got a really great piece along with his colleague Julian McKenzie of The Athletic, breaking down the Jets and Flames coming into tonight's game. So we'll be all over it. Of course, tomorrow is tee off at the Masters. Had to make sure that we got my pal Jeff Feinberg to come on the program. He'll jump in towards the end of the show. And before we're done, make sure to stick around with us live on YouTube because we've got a pair of tickets to give away. We're going to spin the wheel for uh, Jet fans that are able to make the game and have to give a big shout out right off the bat to Adam Doug uh, off the bat to Adam Douglas, WST listener who unfortunately, like many of our friends and fellow Jet fans outside of the city, is going to have a tough time making the drive with so many highways closed in southern Manitoba with this ridiculous blizzard we're dealing with right now. So Adam has given us the tickets, wants to make sure some loud Jet fans are in those seats tonight. So stick around with us before we're finished. After Feinberg's on with us, we will spin the wheel and uh, hopefully send a couple of you to the game Make sure those seats are filled. So a uh, shout out to Adam and everyone dealing with this uh, April blast of winter that we're dealing with right now. Uh, that being said, I think the vibes are high around Winnipeg, even with the weather right now, with some huge anticipation for this game tonight. We're going to get all over it in a minute. Just before we bring in Michael Remus, i got to thank the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day, including our newest sponsors, Modern Man Barbershop, Aquatech, along with Manitoba Battery, Canadian Club, Vita Health Fresh Market, Wallace & Wallace, F Apparel, the Nick & Nicky TQ Group, the great people over at Princess Auto, Consolidated Supply, Royal Sports, Boston Pizza, Little Brown Jug, Aikens Lake, Breezy Bend, Cool Bet Canada, and of course we will get to a why not question of the day for our friends at Not Auto Corp over at Waverly and McGillivray. Michael Remus joins me now, and Remo... The Blackhawks did the Jets a big, big favor last night. But um, to be honest, I'm not sure if that really changes much for this matchup tonight. This is a game the Winnipeg Jets have to have. This is a game the Calgary Flames have to have. And only one team is going to get two points. And whoever gets those two points is going to be in a very, very good situation. Although Calgary really did hurt their chances of being a playoff team last night with that home loss. Yeah, I was following the game and... So Chicago, you know, they were got out to a good start. Then it was tied 2-2. Then it was 4-2. And you're like, oh, wow. Is, is Calgary going to be able to pull pull it off again for the third game in a row, the third period comeback? And they fell just short. And you look at the playoff odds, thanks to Money Puck, they have the Jets right now, 81.9%. Calgary, 13.9%. But you look at tonight's game, and I actually can just show everyone instead of... Uh, just talking about it. Uh, oh, no, I can't. Hold on. Anyways, uh, they have, if the Jets win in regulation, their playoff chances will increase to 95.8%. But if the Flames win, uh, the Jets' playoff chances will go down to 62.3%. So you can really put the nail in the coffin here on the Flames. Uh, their playoff chances, if they lose to the Jets in regulation, will go to 1%. The Jets do have officially have the tiebreaker now, so if they finish tied in points, it'll go to the Jets. So again, uh, I don't know. You know, uh, you know, I was kind of upset a little, has that the Flames lost because you know it went from like Game Seven 
to, you know, game seven to must win and can't lose. Do I think this is more just a can't lose than a must it's win game and six. can't lose? It's, it's game six, it's, not game yeah, seven. Yeah, we Winnipeg. dialed it back to game six. <laughs> it's no longer game seven. Although I think you want to win. You, I mean, in front of the home crowd, uh, the Flames, they had a, a pretty devastating loss yesterday. They flew, you know, time change. They're starting, you know, 23, 22 hours after the game ends. You know, they got to start again. So this this is, uh, you know, scheduled. They were talking about the Flames broadcast. Scheduled loss here for Calgary. The Jets got to take advantage. They got to pounce. They're they're ripe for, for a loss here, the Flames. And the Jets got to, you know, do what playoff teams do, win those games you're supposed to win. Yeah, this is about taking care of business uh, on home ice. Um, this entire homestand is about taking care of business on home ice. And if the Winnipeg Jets do that, they'll be a playoff team right now. Now, you know, those numbers that you just laid out certainly are a lot nicer for Winnipeg after last night's game. And Nashville with their win, albeit in extra time, not in a uh, not in regulation or OT, I guess in a shootout, means that the Jets also have the tiebreaker against the Nashville Predators as well. And may as well throw this up right now as far as where we are at with the, um, you know, with the standings. The Winnipeg Jets holding on to that final wildcard spot in the West right now. Calgary losing last night ends up making it a three, sorry, two-point difference between Winnipeg and Calgary and a three-point difference between Winnipeg and Nashville. And Nashville's finally made up their games in hand. So the Jets and Preds both have five games remaining. They played 77. Winnipeg at 89. Nashville at uh, at 86. And the Flames, two back of Winnipeg, but only with four games remaining. So um, Calgary is on the ropes right now, and the Jets can pretty much finish them off with a win tonight. But... And we're going to talk about this with Pat Steinberg in a minute, Reem. The one thing that I think you can say about both of these teams is that you never really know what you're going to get. I mean, both of these teams have done very well playing against some of the top teams in the league. And while the Flames can't beat the Chicago Blackhawks, it was the Jets who couldn't beat the San Jose Sharks or the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's a big reason why they find themselves in this position tonight. But uh, a big, big favor from Chicago but that doesn't take away the importance of this game from the Winnipeg Jets. And, you know, speaking of, we will have those tickets to give out. And thanks again to Adam for uh, for sending those over to send uh, someone to the game. I do hope that most fans are going to be able to get to this one because certainly we've got some major, major road issues in large areas of southern Manitoba. Don't forget, it's a 6.30 start as well with the national game. So you're going to want to get there early. Of course, it's the Pride Night. Jets will be all wearing those jerseys in the uh, in the warm up. If you want to get there to support there, get early. And then Remo, by the way, a happy Passover to you and all of our Jewish friends, uh, because this is a big night on the Jewish calendar. And unfortunately, we'll probably be missing some regular fans as well at the games that um, you know probably have uh, big Passover dinners with uh, with their families. Yeah, big dinner uh, for those are kind of like the Jewish Easter here uh, coming. Uh, you know, usually it rides up around the same time. So I got a family dinner tonight, and I do know people who are selling and giving away tickets. But I do am expecting us a big a big crowd this evening, a raucous crowd, playoff like atmosphere. You know, it's a whiteout outside. I don't know if it's going to be a whiteout in the building. I think you should save those for the playoffs, but you can bring it as they brought it on Friday and Sunday because it felt. Really nice, especially when the team scores, you know, six goals here. Oh, uh, I think it brings everyone up. I mean, you're just ha- you're having, you know, playing the Dubois goal song. Everyone's dancing, you know, Friday. And it's funny, you and me are talking here. It almost feels like it almost feels like Friday vibes right now heading into the long oh. weekend, although it's Wednesday. And uh, so we still got, uh, you know, one more day, one more day to go. And of course, uh, just a reminder, we won't be on Friday. We will do the show Thursday, and you can listen to that heading into a Saturday's game. Yeah, I- exactly. I will uh, kind of recap of tonight's huge game and look ahead to the Saturday game against Nashville on tomorrow's show. Obviously, round one at the Masters as well. And then, but I- I'm with you. I mean, I-, I said this to you beforehand. I mean, I had this Friday feeling right now, even though we've got this ridiculous weather outside. Um, you know, the-, the 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 excitement going into this game. 
the excitement of the Masters starting tomorrow, knowing that it's lining up with the Easter weekend and having good Friday off and the entire weekend to watch the event and hopefully see the Winnipeg Jets pretty much lock down their playoff spot. Um, it is a fun time around uh, the Winnipeg Sports Talk chat right now. By the way, shout out to everyone that's with us. Huge crowd just right out of the gate today. Great to see you all. If you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button. We're less than 50 away from 9,000, Remo. A big, big milestone coming. Hopefully we can make that happen over the next few days. Yeah, I'm, it's we've been coming on pretty hot um, You know, the last week. Like Monday's show was a real strong one for us. I saw 4K YouTube views. Yesterday's coming up on 3K. I know our podcast downloads yesterday uh, were some of the most, you know, the last week and a bit, I mean, some of the most we've had in months. So I think the excitement is there. We're feeling very close to playoff hockey. And I think it's going to be awesome, you know, when it gets here, but the Jets have to do the work and make sure they punch the ticket. And we do appreciate everyone who's coming in here, hitting the thumbs up, subscribing, you know, commenting after on any of our videos. All that stuff helps tell YouTube. We're making good content here and is more likely to show it to other people who might be interested, who don't, you know, there's people here that don't know. People in Winnipeg don't know what we're doing over here. We're, you know, over two years in, there's people like, what? You you do a podcast? <laughs> so uh, thanks, everyone, uh, who is here. I uh, appreciate, appreciate all the support. Yeah, spread the word, folks, if you can, and uh, hit that thumbs up and make sure you've hit that red subscribe button. Of course, if you just found us on YouTube, Winnipeg Sports Talk, also available as an audio pod right after the live broadcast, just in time for your drive home if you're working sort of 9 to 4, 9 to 5. So uh, you can find Winnipeg Sports Talk wherever you get your favorite pods. Just search Winnipeg Sports Talk and subscribe there as well. Um, So last night, we're watching this game, and and I, like many of you who watched the third period of the Calgary Flames' last two games against Vancouver and against Anaheim and saw them come back and find a way to win, completely expected that to happen last night, but it didn't. It was sort of a stunning loss, and we'll talk about it coming up with Pat Steinberg. Um, I told you off air, I mean, the one thing I really do miss about not having the old station around is the post-game calls and post-game callers, and I tuned into Pat's show last night. I wanted, just wanted to hear what you know was being said in Calgary, as well as the Barnburner show uh, this morning. Um, And that was a fan base that was disappointed, angry, pissed off. Nazem Kadri was taking most of the heat last night. And and I had to laugh, Remo, because what we were listening to on those shows was pretty much exactly the tone of what we were saying here last Wednesday after the Winnipeg Jets lost a game we really felt they had to have against the San Jose Sharks. And... Um, you know, there's no room for error right now, especially with the teams chasing. And that's what made that that loss for Calgary so surprising last night. And I mean, I have no idea what to expect from the visitors tonight based on what happened last night. That's the third game in four nights. They played last night, flew in late. Um, but you'd have to think that there will be a big pushback from Calgary, considering that this basically could be their last stand if they don't get two points against the Winnipeg Jets this evening. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Um, the Jets and Calgary here, a kind of you know similar storyline where you wouldn't didn't know which team you were going to get. Um, the top players for Calgary haven't been uh, their top players, and so I you know just here you know it's funny you're getting off to bad starts self-inflicted wounds, turnovers, I mean, all the same stuff they're saying about the Flames. You could replace it, uh, and even I think a couple of weeks ago, even my dad messaged me. He's like, I'm reading this article about Calgary. You could just, you know, you know, find it and replace, word Flames, <laughs> replace it with Jets, and it would be the same story. So, uh, you know, the Jets, that hot start really, you know, saved their season or, you know, kept them because, again, we've talked so much for two months, January 17, they were one of the worst teams in the league, and... I think have they pulled themselves out of this tailspin here the, over the last two wins? You know, scoring six goals in each of those games, I um, mean, huge plus. You know, getting the play from their top guys who are finally scoring. Can they continue it? We're hoping they can. But at the same time, like if the Jets fell back into some old habits here, I don't know if you'd be like, you'd be like, oh, they suck, they sucked us in again. So <laughs> I, I seem to think that uh, that Calgary. I mean, this is the perfect spot here for the Jets. This is a smash spot where they got to take advantage of a tired team and come out hot. And I think they're going to, 
I mean, you hope that they will. They got to so they got to reach out and grab this playoff spot because it's yeah. been there. It's been there. It's just been kind of slipping away slowly. Uh, you know, as you're but falling, to, you're like uh, one of the guys from Home Alone, like falling down the ladder, and you try to reach on and grab it. I don't know what kind of no, analogy. This is like uh, you know, this is like WrestleMania on the weekend. Yeah, you, you know, the opponent is <laughs> the days, ladder match. They are out. <laughs> it is time to execute the finishing move tonight <laughs> at Canada Life Center on the Calgary Flames. Now, they Thank won't you. necessarily get the three count right afterwards because there will still be some more work to do with the game against Nashville coming up on Saturday. Um, but I certainly have been the opinion for a long time that the Calgary Flames, based on their schedule, what they had remaining, and this head-to-head matchup was the biggest threat to the Jets not being in a playoff spot. And they've got the opportunity to take care of that tonight when the puck drops at 6.30 p.m. Um, so we will talk more about the Flames, what to expect from the Flames and stories around the visitors tonight coming up in a couple minutes with Pat Steinberg. But just quickly before we do that, Remo, let's get back to the NHL standings right now. We sort of broke down where Winnipeg is and their odds and their likelihood of being a playoff team right now, still depending on how they do over the course of the rest of this homestand. But for the first time in a long time, Paul Maurice's Florida Panthers are back in a playoff spot after last night. The Panthers getting a regulation win. The Penguins losing to the New Jersey Devils. And all of a sudden, with four games remaining in the East for the Panthers, the Islanders, and the Penguins, the Panthers have finally pulled into a playoff spot. They and the Islanders are tied at 87 points on those final two spots. And the Pittsburgh Penguins now one point out of the playoffs. And one of those teams will not be dancing once we get to uh, the end of game 82. Yeah, I saw a clip uh, Florida celebrating pretty hard yesterday, and they've kind of been on the ropes all season fighting for their lives, and they've got it hot at the right time. You know, they had injuries early on. I think they seem, seem to be more healthy now, and 6-4-0 you know, and oh, and their last 10 is slightly better than the Islanders and Pittsburgh, who's tailed off. Buffalo as well. I didn't think they had the defense and goaltending. So Florida, you know, they can score. They do give up give up goals as well. So maybe they will be in after all, after, you know, seemingly uh, had some tough patches there. Um, you know, the East, the East mostly set, but the West, we did have a couple clinchers. Colorado clinching yesterday. And what's amazing to me is this three-way tie top of the central division uh you know yeah. Col- colorado got off to the slow rug oh is there's a stanley cup hangover for the avalanche and they didn't make any like crazy moves at the deadline they got um who they got lars eller but here they are you know where you thought they would be first first place in the central uh in a three-way tie there with dallas and minnesota yeah the uh they've got the one game in hand right now um but 98 points and that's another reason like we know that the Winnipeg Jets have a couple more outs than uh, the, the Calgary Flames do, but I mean the final two games of the season are basically exactly where Calgary's been—a back-to-back game where you're playing Minnesota in another city after a home game against the San Jose Sharks, and then a day off in the final game of the year against the Colorado Avalanche. And that game, in all likelihood, I mean I have a hard time imagining it. Either of these teams will be able to sort of separate themselves from the others by the time we get to those final few games of this season. So that's going to be a meaningful game for Minnesota. It's going to be a meaningful game for the Colorado Avalanche, which speaks to the opportunity that the Winnipeg Jets have right now in their own building, on their own terms, to move past a disappointing couple of months and get back into the win column and get back into the playoffs and start planning for some whiteouts here in Winnipeg. I see in the core we trust asking, did I call them the Prancers? No, no, the Panthers, Florida Panthers, Paul Maurice's club. Um, and Sandy Sharp in chat saying, uh, who's going to the game? Yeah, let us know. If you're heading to the game tonight, hit us up in the chat. I will be there and we'll be bringing it. Uh, and certainly, as I say, uh, if you're not going to the game, but you would like to hang around because we do have a pair of tickets from a uh, Jet fan and listener who's not able to travel in for the game tonight. We want to make sure those seats are filled with uh, a fan that is going to be bringing it tonight to get behind the home team. Um, and I, just speaking of the crowd and the atmosphere tonight, Remo, I mean, I think that it is going to be um, for the fans that are able to get into the building and to make it there might take a little bit longer. Um, but I think we're going to see as 
excited and as energetic a crowd as we've seen in a long time at Canada Life Centre. And you just hope that the Winnipeg Jets can, you know, play the way they did in the last couple games, take advantage of a Calgary team coming off that tough loss and playing last night and get the job done. Because I, I'll tell you this right now, if the Jets are able to win this game tonight, not only can we very likely be planning for getting the whites out in some playoff hockey, um, but I think we'll hear and see even more of the rejuvenation of the fans getting behind the team. They stepped up big time on Friday night and on Sunday night, coming off that disappointing road trip. And uh, be nice to see the uh, the team continue to play that the way they did, get a little bit of success, and uh, make that building one of the most fun places in the in the uh, National Hockey League to watch a game. Yeah, you felt it on uh, Friday and Sunday. The players felt it. They gave them the boost. So. Uh, I want to see that uh, playoff-like atmosphere. You know, I was thinking we didn't really get it uh, against that series against Edmonton because of, uh, you know, we couldn't have fans. And that's, I almost forgot about that. I tried to black those times out, those playoff runs. So uh, 2018, 2019, you know, the last real time we had, uh, you know, packed playoffs. So hey, anything can happen. You know, we were kind of down on the Jets last week, but funny how winning changes it. And now we're thinking, hey, if you get in, uh, you know, you got the best goalie in the league. You definitely have a shot against, you know, you can. this team is capable of beating any team on any night. So uh, we will see what happens. Just for the, you know, I haven't really talked about the lineup or the morning skate. Uh, Hellebuck didn't skate, but he's obviously starting. And, and, you know, line rushes, you know, same thing as before. Connor, Dubois, Shifley, Ehlers, Nemestikov, Wheeler, Niederreiter, Lowry, Appleton. But it was Menelainen on the right side with Stanley in the middle and Barron on left uh, Morrissey, Demello, Dylan Pionk, Sandberg, Schmidt, and I do wonder. Um, Hellbach has like, is he just going to go until they clinch the spot? Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, yes. I, mean, I, I said this two weeks ago. You're not you seeing Big Save Dave until April. Well, it's April right now, um, and and on part of it is the schedule. I mean, they've got two days off in between the last game and tonight. Another two days off between sa- this and Saturday. What the key is for the Jets and for Hellebuck, certainly for his readiness for the playoffs to give him a little bit of time to rest, would be to take care of business on home ice in these next three games uh, and then give Dave the opportunity to play probably against the Minnesota Wild and potentially as well against the Colorado Avalanche if Connor Hellebuck feels that he'd rather take another game off and uh, just be uh, max rested. Although we might want to play in that last game heading into the playoffs. It will be up to him, but um, hell of a or bust until there's an X beside the Winnipeg Jets uh, Jets name. Now, as I mentioned, we are going to talk more about what happened last night with the flames and the situations around the visitors in a minute with Pat Steinberg, but Remo, let's hear from Rick bonus. If we can get those clips up uh, because bones did speak after the morning skate today, um, obviously a big part of the topic was what happened with Calgary last night. Um, but for the Winnipeg Jets, it's about their game and taking care of business at home. But we'll start it off with Bones on uh, the Flames coming in here after that devastating loss at home on at home last night. Yeah, well, listen, they, that was, they played really well last night. They all played Chicago. Uh, they had some great opportunities, especially at the end of the game when they pulled their goalie. So that, that game could have flipped very, very easily. Chicago capitalized on the chances that they got, the two-on-one, the turnover. So they didn't get nearly as many chances as, as Calgary did. It was one of the nights where the, the Hawks capitalized and finished their chances, and uh, Calgary had a lot. So they, they played a lot. Lot better than what the score, and they played hard right to the bitter end, and that's what they're going to do to us. That's a Calgary Flame team. They're going to battle every inch of the way for 60 minutes. Yeah, no, I, I think the Flames will make the Jets earn this one tonight, one way or the other. I don't think we'll see a, a lifeless team that looks defeated. I think we'll see a team playing for their lives tonight, and that's certainly the way the Winnipeg Jets have to approach this. Um, from a Jets perspective, funny the difference a week makes because those two big wins, the 12 goals on the weekend, all the slumps that were broken, um, it seems like this team has a bit of its swagger back, and that certainly did offensively. Um, Rick Bone is talking about just how this team is feeling coming into a game of such huge magnitude tonight. Yeah, well, you know, it's been a couple of games now, so... 
you know, there was a lot of life in practice yesterday. The guys are feeling good about where our team game is right now. We're not giving up very much. And we're finally scoring, as we talked about yesterday. So the, the guys, they, they feel good about where we are. They feel really good going into this game. I, I can tell you that. All right, so there's uh, Bones on this. And just one more on Bones about tonight. And I think everyone would agree, from a Jets perspective, with the situation at hand, Calgary had playing last night, traveling in. Uh, you know, a good start would go a long, long way um, to, you know, putting the pressure on Calgary uh, to come back and really to energize the building, get the fans behind them, and keep going what they built in the last couple of games. Here's Bones on the need to get another good start tonight at home. Well, we we want to start tonight like we started at home the last couple of games and go after them and hopefully get that early lead. That's what we've been able to do the last two home games, and that's going to be our mindset tonight. We want to get off to a great start. We want to put them down as early if we can and then just stay on top of them, not give them a chance to fight their way back into the game. So, um, yeah, that's, that's basically what we're going to try to do. Just in the bigger picture, though, in terms of the ability to, you know, they would be five out with yeah, three to yeah, go. Yeah, no, I get it. I know where we are going, but well, this is where <laughs> I don't want to go t- look too far ahead. We just want to take that game, and then and then we'll worry about it after the game. Yeah, don't think for a second that uh, Bones and his staff, and probably most of the players, don't know all the permutations and the math involved with this playoff race right now. But it's pretty simple. They don't need to worry about anything. Go out, have a great first shift for all the lines. Score the first goal if possible. Get the crowd behind you. Win the hockey game. And then get ready for some playoff hockey. But first, the Nashville Predators on Saturday night. Um, Let's go to number six here, Bones. uh, Remo. Uh, Bones also talked about um, defending the Calgary Flames. They're bigger, yeah, yeah, and they're going to attack the net. We're going to have to be really physical around our net. They do attack the net really, really hard, and they're big, and they're strong. So uh, it's going to be, it's at both nets. Like, their defense are big and physical. Our forwards have got to get there. And around our net, we've got to be able to keep them away from the net so Halley can see the puck or get down there and find the rebound. But they, they're a very aggressive team. They're a very physical team. So it's going to go back to our ability to break the puck out and not put ourselves in those positions where we're battling in the corner, we're battling in the net front. Uh, we want to get that puck. We want to go north, and we want to play as fast as we can and uh, keep the puck out of our zone so we're not getting into those big battles and scrums. All right, so there's the uh, the coach's game plan for uh, tonight heading into the 6.30 puck drop down at Canada Life Centre. Um, we talked a lot about the three lines. Of course, Morgan Barron not playing in the top nine right now, but still being an impactful player, had that huge play to create a penalty shot and then capitalized on it against New Jersey on Sunday night. Um, Kenny asked Rick Bonus about um, what he's seen as of late from Morgan Barron. Morgan Barron, we've talked about him a lot. How impressed have you been with his ability to maintain his high level, even though you have reduced his ice time in the last stretch of time? From him it, bumping to third line to fourth. He's played like, actually really well in the minutes, right? He's, he's, he's played better. In some of these games, he's played better at fewer minutes than a lot of minutes. If that doesn't probably doesn't make any sense to you, but he has. His shifts are more consistent. His shifts are more intense. All the things we've talked about. Sometimes early earlier, when he was up in that 18-minute mark, they just weren't nearly as effective as as they are now. So his his ice time has been reduced, but we're getting more out of him. If that makes any sense to you, and uh, and he's handling it really well. I mean, the way the lines are set up now with uh, with Nick playing there and Nino on left wing and Casey, um, it's it's where it, so he ends up. Up on the fourth line, he's still a big part of the penalty kill, and I get that line out there as much as I can because I, I, I do trust them, and I do trust Morgan. And we had a good talk this morning, as a matter of fact, about the, that about that specific thing. All right, and Bo- uh, Baron, of course, will be skating on that fourth line with Stenny in the middle, and Sakumanalainen back in for Carson Kuhlman, the one lineup change expected for tonight's game against the Calgary Flames. Here's just a little bit more from um, Rick Bonus on Morgan Barron and his recent contributions. 
He understands his role. He understands who's ahead of him now, and um, he, he accepts his role. Yeah, he, he knows it's his first full year in the league as well. Let's not forget that. Um, but he's made a lot of a, a lot of big and big strides in improvement this year. He'll keep getting better. Uh, we talked about that. You know, the, his career today. How is he going to stay in the league, and how is he going to uh, continue to grow in this league? Um, so he's he's a smart guy. He'll figure it all out. Just one last one. We talk about his defensive awareness a lot, but for him to be able, you know, he's at eight now, he scores on a penalty shot. How important would it be for him to get to that double digit mark and, you know, build towards being maybe a 15 goal guy down the road or yeah. 15 plus? That's where you got to project him, like down the road as he plays a little bit more, 15, 20 goals, and then hopefully more. Like, like we talked this morning about that. So um, he went through a long stretch without scoring a goal. Um, but now the, when you see him walking on the penalty shot and have that confidence, that's a great sign. That means he's maturing. He's, he's growing as a player because there was a while that he went a long stretch without a goal. Um, and now so it's good to see the puck go. We went in for him the other night. And that's, again, that's, all those things help uh, grow your confidence and, and help you mature into a, a good player in this league. All right, so there's Rick Bonus on Morgan Barron, who's been a big part of these last couple wins, despite, as Ken mentioned, you know, playing a little less than he maybe was earlier in the season when he was consistently on that line with Adam Lowry and Mason Appleton. Um, wow, 550 in the chat right now, folks. Welcome to anybody new. Hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. And, folks, if you could, smash the thumbs up. Let's bang out some numbers today on Winnipeg Sports Talk with so many people in here with us live on YouTube in the chat getting ready for this game tonight. And great to see so many people in the chat saying that they've got tickets to the game tonight. They're going to the game tonight. They're going to be there, and um, yeah, it's definitely time. The fans brought it big time on Friday and Sunday, I think, at a time where this team absolutely needed it. Um, and that'll be the same case tonight. Stick around, though. If you don't have seats, we do have a pair of tickets. Our uh, pal Adam Douglas, a regular listener, not able to make it into the game like probably many of our friends and fellow Jet fans from outside of the city. They want to make sure we've got a couple loud and proud fans supporting the home team tonight. Stick around. We'll do that at the end of the program. But we are going to go to Calgary in just a minute to hook up with Pat Steinberg and find out what the heck happened last night and what to expect from the visitors this evening. Before we do that, though, a big thanks to one of our newest sponsors, Modern Man Barber Shops. Modern Man now with eight locations in Winnipeg, including their two newest locations on Pembina Highway, very close to the university, right by Bishop Grandin, or out in Transcona at Plessy Road. Modern Man Barber Shops offer a variety of grooming services, including haircuts, beard shaping, shaves, color services, and more. Obviously, have an incredible selection of male grooming products as well. Book your look and make an appointment by a modernmanbarber.com. And give them a follow on Instagram as well at Modern Man Barber Shops. And hey, if you do have scissor skills as they continue to grow, Modern Man Barber Shops currently seeking barbers. You can send your resume into info at AuraHairGroup.com. Also want to thank AquaTech Pools and Spa and Whole Home Renos for jumping on board with WST. Hey, folks, make 2023 the year you take the plunge. Visit aqua-tech.ca to design your own custom pool. Nothing, No bigger game changer for you and your family summer than getting a beautiful new pool from AquaTech to enjoy during the summer months. Their team can provide on-the-spot pricing from designers as well as financing options that suit you. And, you know, with AquaTech doing so, many, so much work in so many homes... You're now branching out into whole home renovations. It starts with Aquatech. With thousands of rentals as their foundation, let Aquatech upgrade any space in your home. If you're looking to finance, their team can provide plans that suit you. Schedule a design visit today. Visit aqua-tech.ca to learn more. Uh, I'm Donnie and the gang at Manitoba Battery. It's like the never-ending winter and uh, certainly there'll be some people who'll be needing batteries today. Uh, but listen, whether you need one for your car, your truck, or even that summer toy you're working on right now in advance of spring and summer, 
Manitoba Battery has the most convenient and well-priced option in the city, and they'll bring it to you. You can order a battery at lunchtime today or, heck, at the start of Winnipeg Sports Talk and have it sitting on your door to, doorstep in two to four hours for less money than you'd spend anywhere else in Winnipeg on the same battery. No more fighting for a parking spot at Costco or waiting in line at Canadian Tire. Shop local and let Manitoba Battery bring the battery to you at the best prices in town. Give Donnie and his staff a call at 783-8787. Order online at manitobabattery.com or pop down to visit them in person at 1026 Logan Avenue. And just before we bring in Pat Steinberg, big shout out to our friends at Canadian Club, Canada's favorite Canadian whiskey, is also the official spirit of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and WST. Of course, Canadian Club and Ginger Ale now available in 473 milliliter cans at your local liquor mart and beer vendors. And of course, we're all counting down the days so we can enjoy a few CC and gingers with fellow bomber fans out at IG Field. Pick up Canadian Club today at your local Manitoba Liquor Marts. All right, Murata Tesh coming up in about 20 minutes or so. Really looking forward to his thoughts on tonight's game. Great breakdown in The Athletic. Uh, but let's find out more on the visitors right now with our good friend Pat Steinberg, the host of Flames Talk and Flames Broadcast on Sports at 960 in Cowtown. Pat, what's going on? Uh, I'm doing all right, Huss. Uh, the... Uh... The game tonight in Winnipeg is a little. It, it feels a little less massive, but uh, I will say, I will say, the Flames season without question is on the line at Canada Life Center tonight. So I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite as looking forward to this as I was prior to Tuesday, but uh, still a big game in Winnipeg tonight. Well, I mean, just I guess before we get to tonight, what the heck happened last night? I mean, Calgary had uh, they'd been doing what they had to do to win hockey games. It seemed almost inconceivable that they could lose last night to the 32nd place team in the National Hockey League considering how high the stakes were. Well, you say that from the outside that it seems inconceivable and yet so many of us were like, yeah, we kind of, I don't want to say we saw it coming because the Flames had finally put together their first four game win streak of the season and, and finally were starting to show some of the things that you know, a lot of people pointed to and said, yeah, you know what? This is why we think this team can be a real factor this year. But they have had problems beating teams like Chicago and specifically Chicago all year long. They end up going 0-2-1 against the Blackhawks, the 32nd ranked team in the NHL. They get one of a six, one of six possible points in a season series. And so, you know, they'd lost a home game to Anaheim this year. They've lost to Ottawa this year. They had trouble with Detroit this year, losing both games against the Red Wings. And you're just like, as much as they were playing better and as much as they had won four in a row, you still had this feeling in the back of your head that it was like, okay, are they going to be able to figure this one out against Chicago? And and a couple, a couple of things worried me. Number one, they have this game looming in Winnipeg on the Wednesday night, and you're just worried, okay, well, we all know how big that game is. Are the Flames going to look past the Blackhawks? And I don't know if they did, but enough guys said it in the locker room after the game that you're like, well, maybe they did, and I guess it's human nature that sometimes you look ahead to the most important game of your season, even though you've got the complete opposite the night before. And then I was also really concerned about Jacob Markstrom. I was actually quite surprised. They went with Markstrom on Tuesday night. I think they're probably going to go back to Jacob against the Jets tonight, just based on the season being on the line. I know people in Calgary would be stunned if they didn't, but we thought it would be a really good place against the Hawks to go to Dan Vladar because Jacob looked pretty fatigued going into his last few starts. You're, okay, get him the rest against the 32nd ranked team in the league and then make sure he is fresh and no excuses and you're going to see him against Winnipeg. And they go to Markstrom and he looked a little shaky. The whole team looked shaky. Like that's not a goaltending loss, but yeah, it, it, I can understand why it would be a big shock on the outside, but at the same time, it's kind of one of the things that has plagued this group this year and one of the reasons why they are where they are. Well, I, I stayed up late and listened to uh, your show, and you went OT last night. I mean, uh, the one yeah. thing I really do, I, nights like that, uh, you know, I miss the post-game callers here in Winnipeg that we don't have anymore, and there was obviously a lot of uh, – 
a lot of angry and disappointed Flames fans, which I can understand. The guy that maybe took the brunt of it, both from fans and media, was Nazem Kadri. And, you know, for such a big game, a guy that was thought to be a gamer coming in with that Stanley Cup ring and the experience and the pedigree, um, is there more to it with Kadri and the performance last night? It just doesn't seem like he's really uh, been in sync, at least with the head coach throughout this year. But, um, man, he was taking a lot of heat last night. Well, and, and for good reason. I mean, those two plays that he made that led directly to goals, I, mean, I, I, I still don't know how that first one where he kind of one hand shovels it with less than a minute to go in the first period and goes right to Boris Kachuk and and he puts it on Jujar Kara's stick and makes it 2-1 and I know the Flames tied it from there but just how deflating is that to see one of your most important players you know it's it's okay if you don't execute on a play because you just, you know, you're you're overzealous or you just kind of make the wrong read or you put something too hard off the boards and, and it, it skips over a teammate's stick. But when you're gonna when you're not gonna execute and it's due solely to you know, lack of urgency or laziness, which clearly is what happened on that play. Um, it's it's hard to accept. And then in the third period where the Flames started like a completely nervous hockey team and they looked like a group that was kind of gripping it and saying, okay, we have got to win this because we know how big that game is in Winnipeg the next night. For, for him to cough the puck up in the neutral zone on the go-ahead goal, and this time a go-ahead goal that the Hawks didn't look back from, I, I just, it, it was indefensible. I, I had, you know, I'm a big Nazem Kadri fan. I was a big fan of that signing. And for the first half of the season, he was a really good player, Huss. He was their lone representative at the All-Star game and deserved to be. And since coming back from the All-Star game, it has been a completely different story. And I don't know, look, we know for sure that there have been multiple times this year that Kadri and Daryl Sutter have not been on the same page. I think there's no doubt about that, that those two guys have at times kind of been on different planes and, and they have not seen eye to eye and all that type of stuff that, that much, uh, that much, I think we know for a fact, but for him to kind of go through the drop off that he's gone through since the all-star break is, is hard to wrap your head around. And some, some theorize it's just because he and Daryl maybe aren't getting along or some theorize that, you know, ever since, cause this, the first game, the flames played after the all-star break, uh, your old buddy, Jacob Truba completely lit up uh, Nazem Kadri with one of the, the hits of the year. And a lot of people theorize maybe there's still some hangover from that. It's not like he was injured on the play, but he got absolutely destroyed destroyed on that play um, or or maybe there's something else going on but you know what we saw last night from Nazem Kadri has kind of been symbolic and, and symptomatic of what the Flames have struggled with all year long they are where they are yeah because they can't beat bad teams or, or lower teams at times and and yeah maybe because coach and certain players haven't gotten along or, or haven't seen eye to eye all the time but in, in reality the number one reason why the Flames will potentially miss the playoffs here is because they have not gotten the type of performances they need from their best players. So whether it's Kadri and that was at its most glaring on Tuesday night or Jonathan Huberdeau, who's having one of, if not the most historic drops in points from one season to the next and points per game from one season to the next, or Elias Lindholm, who was a Selkie trophy runner up last year. And while he hasn't been bad this year, hasn't been anywhere near the impact maker that he was the year before or in years past, or Jacob Markstrom, who was a Vesna Trophy runner-up and now is one of the worst starting goaltenders in the NHL statistically this year. When you have got, when you lose your number one line and you lose two hundred and whatever they lost, two hundred and nineteen points from Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Gaudreau in one off season, and you turn into a team that is going to be more of a some of your parts group, and then the top players aren't pulling their weight on anywhere near regular basis, you're, you're going to probably be in tight or, or be in tough. And that's exactly what we've seen. And that's exactly what happened on Tuesday night against the Blackhawks. You know, it is incredible that we are where we are going into this game tonight, considering the seasons of these two teams. I mean, everything you had just said about the flames 
about Nazem Kadri. I mean, you could literally rewind <laughs> a week and hear me on this show saying the exact same things. Insert Winnipeg Jets, insert Mark Shifley, insert Rick Bonus on this. Um, and, you know, the, the Jets, to their credit, you know, did get it together and won those two big games. But, I mean, it's – Remus and I were talking about it earlier. It was just eerie how similar – the reaction and the performance, frankly, of the Flames was to the Jets last Tuesday in a game that they had to have against the San Jose Sharks, which brings us to tonight. Um, not a lot of time to dwell on last night's game. The season is on the line for Calgary as it is for Winnipeg. Wow. I'm not sure it's easy to, to predict this, but I mean, what do you expect from Calgary tonight? How much will this team have left? And, you know, will they push back and be a much better team than you know that they can be considering um, just how devastating that loss was to their playoff chances. And I'm sure the atmosphere and mood around the room after winning four in a row. Well, I mean, first of all, it would be very on brand if they were to go into Winnipeg tonight after that last loss against Chicago and, and put up their best game of the year and look like world beaters. And, and all of a sudden, you know, draw a few more people back in and and like that would be very on brand for how this season has gone because they've done that multiple times um and and they've had those those even on back-to-back -back nights where they've looked bad one night and then the very next game you're like okay that's much more like what we thought the flames are going to be so that would be very on brand but you know there is one thing that i i, I I do worry a little bit more about this one uh, because it is the third game in four nights, second half of a back-to-back. -back. This is a tight turn for the Flames. They go from playing 7 o'clock local to 5.30 local with, you know, is, is Winnipeg as far as Tampa or, or Miami? No, but it's still two provinces away, and it's still a two-hour flight. That You know, they, they probably aren't in bed until 3 or 4 in the morning central time. So, you know, that's, that's a tight turn. And then come back for a 5.30 local in Calgary and a 6.30 start in, in Winnipeg. I mean, it's, it's a tight turn. Third game in four nights. And when you hear the head coach last night after the loss, when he was asked about Nazem Kadri, talk about he doesn't know if some of his top guys' energy levels are where they need to be. I, I do wonder about where the needle is on that gas tank. And I do wonder both physically and maybe more so mentally where this group is going into the game. And I guess I guess for me the one thing that I think is is non-negotiable for the Flames is execution might not be at 10 out of 10 and energy levels may not be at 10 out of 10 but you know you just said the the jet season flame season is on the line and yeah it is but Winnipeg will still control their own destiny if they end up losing this game tonight the flames will be dead and buried if they don't win this game tonight and it will be it and their chances will still be slim if they find a way to win but they have got to go out there and we have got to see from an urgency and desperation standpoint it's got to look like this is game seven it's got to look like their season truly is is on the line because for the flames it is they uh they go from having next to no margin for error to you know the next time that they blink they could be eliminated if they lose this game so i, I guess what you want to see if you're a flames fan is they play like this game means everything they lay everything out there like it means everything and you come away saying well they lost the game but it's because the better team won. It's because the Jets are rolling. It's because Winnipeg had a, had a great atmosphere and, and, you know, they just found a way to win. But if they if they don't go out there and, and from Kadri out have a bounce back and if they don't go out there and look from an urgency standpoint like everything truly is on the line, then there's going to be a lot of frustrated and disappointed people. And quite frankly, I think it'll lead to some – you know, some some bigger picture questions that have kind of been hanging over this group for the last three months. And so that's what that's what you want to see is that type of effort. And it might not be enough because the gas tank might just not have enough in it. And the Jets might just be too good. And they're rolling themselves right now. But at the very least, come out of the game like, you know, that that you you did play like your season's on the line. So I don't know if I'm expecting that. I think I am, but I guess if you're the Flames, that has to be the non-negotiable expectation. Whether or not they go out and do that or not is another question because 
I don't know, kind of didn't, you, you needed to have the same mindset last night, and we didn't necessarily see that. Pat Steinberg, the host of Flames Talk on Sports at 960 and Flames Broadcast, joining us on Winnipeg Sports Talk. You mentioned Daryl Sutter, and um, I, I'm interested in just your perspective on the season that he's had and what you've heard from him. But in particular, how did he react to last night's loss to the Blackhawks? He, uh, I mean, it's it's funny because a lot of times after losses, Daryl's kind of the the more jovial version of himself. He's he's laughing. His answers are a little bit uh, more effusive and all that type of stuff. It, it tends to be the pattern that after losses, you don't get uh, a lot of uh, snarkiness. You don't get a lot of surliness from the coach. And then after wins, you see a whole lot more of that sometimes. And <laughs> So I, it was it was very similar like that last night. He gave some good answers and and you know it was he was not there to throw any players under the bus. Uh, a couple times asked directly about Nazem Kadri and and wouldn't uh, wouldn't go down that road of saying you know that was unacceptable or any anything like that. Um, so you know he, last night was very on brand for him after a big loss, trying to keep it light, trying to, you know, not go down that road. It's been a really weird year though. Um, you know, last year, Daryl Sutter hit every button properly and got the very most out of this team on route to them having the second best regular season in franchise history and getting to round two of the playoffs wins the Jack Adams. Like it was, it was a great year and the, the Daryl Sutter mania in this city was back like it was in the early two thousands when he was the head coach. And it's, it's the, the conversation has changed dramatically in in one year um there's been there's been a lot of difficulty in getting the most out of this team this year there's clearly whether it's been public which there have been some public episodes uh or or behind closed doors there there have been you know multiple veterans this year and i think Kadri and and huberto are the two that have been most public but not the only ones where veteran and coach have not been on same page or have not seen eye to eye. And, and that's been, um, that's been difficult. Um, and, and so there's a lot of people wondering, has he lost the room or have they quit on him? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case, but it's, it's been brought up multiple times by fans in this market. And, and there's also been some very strange utilization this year, Huss, when you take a look at how Daryl has gone about utilizing young players and how he's utilized his lineup in games and how much he's thrown certain players onto the ice when maybe it's time or, or maybe the opinion is on the outside. It's time to shorten benches or even at times how he's used his goaltenders. There's been plenty of reason for criticism in, in that right. So it, it, Last year, every button was pressed properly. This year, it's been more of a challenge. And I don't think that's all on the coach because, you know, with what the Flames went through in the offseason, there's a lot going on in trying to build a new nucleus and, and build more chemistry and, and start, to, start to try to build this team for where we all thought they were going to go. But I think it's, I think it's pretty clear that it's going to take a whole lot longer than we thought it was going to take. And, you know, I think that, here you're like okay well it might take 10 or 15 or 20 games you know it might take 82 plus games when it's all said and done for this team to be there and so that's been that's been a challenge because you've got so many new core faces in um so i don't put it all on the coach but when you take a look at the way this season is gone you also can't absolve him and i know there are many here in this city that are are very much like in daryl we trust and i get that because he's a two-time cup winner and he's got a ton of equity built up in calgary but yeah i think i think part of this season does fall on Daryl Sutter, not solely on him. There's been plenty of finger pointing and blame and, and valid blame to go around. But yeah, it's, it's been a rough year for Daryl compared to the way it went last year. There's, there's no doubt about it. You know, um, I mean, we talked about the incredible job that Brad Treleving did uh, last summer, turning um, chicken bleep into chicken salad. If you know what I'm saying, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, Pat, what, um, how does that impact Brad Treleving's future? Because I believe he's got an expiring contract, if I'm not mistaken. He does, and it's, um, it's one of those scenarios where even if they make the playoffs, there's a lot of uncertainty as to whether or not the GM is back next year. And, and that's, the, 
that's kind of this been this interesting subplot hanging over all season, whether they've been good or they've been playing poorly. It's like, okay, well, what does next season look like? Um, because as of right now, Huss, the only person under contract for next season when it comes to kind of the important hockey ops uh, positions is Daryl Sutter. So Sutter's got a two-year contract extension that kicks in. His assistant coaches are done at the end of the year. The general manager is done at the end of the year and his assistants. So Brad True Living, Craig Conroy, Brad Pascal, Chris Snow, all on expiring contracts. And then all of Daryl's assistant staff is on expiring contracts. So, and, and, and I don't even know if that means that, that Daryl is completely guaranteed to be back next year either there's been enough there's been enough talk out there there's been enough insider buzz that that is up in the air when it comes to his future so yeah there's all kinds of uncertainty as to what the leadership of this group looks like for next year and so for brad true living he doesn't have a contract uh, i do believe that there were contract talks and and contract offers prior to the season and right around when Daryl got his extension. Uh, I do believe there have been overtures and discussions throughout the year between Brad and the flames, but here we are. It's April 5th. They've got four games to go in the regular season and he doesn't have a contract for next year. And, and one of the things that is very important to point out is that he doesn't have a contract and that isn't just Calgary's choice. Like there's, there's two here and the flames may offer him another deal and he may just say, no, I, uh, I'm okay. I'm going to head somewhere else and you know, he'll be fine. Uh, I think if he wants to stay in hockey, he'll stay in hockey. I, I think that at some point, if he wants to be a general manager again, he'll be a GM again, but yeah, I think that there's, there's two that need to decide that they want to continue this relationship. And, and I don't know where the flames are at this point. I think that remains up in the air and, and Brad is holding his cards extremely close to his vest he is an he is a very very shrewd negotiator and i think we're seeing that very much in action right now as as he continues to try to keep things as close to the vest and keep as many options open as he possibly can so regardless of what happens in calgary's final four games Huss, they have got a fascinating offseason ahead of them if they miss the playoffs i didn't think that there could be an offseason that would rival this past off season for the flames. But I, I I'll say this much. If they miss, I am not taking holidays for the first two or three weeks after the season's done, because <laughs> I, I think we're going to be very much in uh, Armageddon watch in terms of what the changes and what type of decisions might be coming down the pipe. It, it is fascinating. And as I said before, I mean, so many of these same storylines and topics that you were talking about with the flames, um, you know, can be compared to some similar ones here with the Winnipeg jets, which brings us to this game tonight with so much on the line. Calgary could be a last stand, a huge opportunity for the Winnipeg jets, but it's never easy for either of these teams, Pat. So I uh, can't wait to see what we get tonight. When we drop the puck, always great having you on the show. My friend, you take it easy and appreciate you jumping on. Good to see you. Huss. All right, great stuff with my pal Pat Steinberg. Had so much fun doing shows with him in Calgary. And, of course, um, he is uh, the go-to guy for all things Flames, hosting the uh, Flames broadcast and Flames talk every night over on Sportsnet 960. A um, hey, big thanks to Stan Scott uh, and everyone in chat. We're pushing 600 right now. Everyone's ready for Marat's uh, appearance on the show today. But Stan, with a really nice super chat, says, Great show, guys. Thanks for filling the sports radio void. Look forward to the show to get me through my workday. Stan, really appreciate that. Um, hey, with everyone in here today, if you haven't already, gang, make sure to hit that red subscribe button. We're closing in on 9,000 subs. Uh, and hit the thumbs up as well while you're at it, if you don't mind. Certainly helps us spread the show. Uh, all right, just before we bring in Murata Tesh, uh, if you're looking for great prices on natural and organic supplements, beauty products, groceries, and Winnipeg's largest assortment of local products, too, you need to get down to any one of seven Vita Health Fresh Market stores or check them out online at myvita.ca. If you're celebrating Earth Day and Earth Month, find all of your Earth friendly cleaning products and some great sustainable items at Vita Health. And, gang, if you had your healthy fats today, yes, there is such a thing. 
Omega-3 fatty acids are beneficial for your skin, brain, joint, and heart health. That's where Health First Omega Supreme comes in. Get your healthy fats the easy way with this one-a-day soft gel. Health First Omega Supreme is on sale all month at Vita Health Fresh Market. Of course, if you can't make it down to any of the seven Vita Health stores, visit their website to buy online. Local delivery is available. Vita Health Fresh Market, empowering people to lead healthy lives. Seven Winnipeg locations, including the newest store in Linden Ridge, and online at myvita.ca. Thanks to everyone that sent in nominations for the Unsung Hero program with Wallace and Wallace throughout the winter. Um, but now we're getting back to business with spring and summer coming. And of course, Wallace and Wallace is Winnipeg's fencing and overhead door specialist serving residential and commercial customers since 1946. If your property needs the security and protection of a new fence, or if this winter has done a number on your old one, give them a buzz because they've got vinyl, ornamental, welded wire, chain link, or wood fences. They have the right one for you. And if it's time to replace your garage door, Wallace & Wallace also has Winnipeg's largest selection of overhead garage doors. Give them a call at 452-2700. The Wallace & Wallace team will arrange a time to come out and give you a free estimate. You can also visit them online at wallacefences.com or pop down to the showroom on Lawson Road off of Keniston. Well, we're bundling up today, but soon this snow will be gone. How's your how's your menswear looking, fellas? How's the closet as we head into spring and summer? If you need to up your menswear game, you need to head down to see Andrew and his great staff at F Apparel heading into spring and summer. Custom suits beginning at 400 bucks, along with chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked styles, and an incredible selection of menswear accessories. 15% discount for wedding parties. If you're in one, talk to them about getting the fellas suited up for the big day there. And if you have a high school grad in the family, a free custom shirt and tie from F Apparel for all 2023 high school grads with the purchase of a new suit. 190 Smith Street downtown. Make an appointment at F Apparel. And I did see our pal DQ Nick in the chat. They're getting quite busy, ready for this snow to leave. And I know we've got a bit of a blizzard outside, but the blizzards that we like here on Winnipeg Sports Talk are the ones that Nick and Nikki are serving up at 104 Nick and Nikki DQ locations. The DQ in Neverville, DQ Northgate, DQ Polo Park, DQ St. Anne's. Jump on a blizzard, and while you're at it, may I suggest maybe the Flamethrower Stack Burger if you like things a little spicy. And if you do need a custom cake, you can hit them up on Instagram at DQ Manitoba. Let them know what you want. Send them a picture. They'll get it done for you as only Nick and Nikki can for a quick and easy pickup at any of the four Nick and Nikki DQ locations. All right. Let's welcome in Marat Atash, who's been busy getting ready for tonight's game and a real interesting piece for athletic subscribers along with his colleague Julian McKenzie eyeing up both sides of this huge game tonight at Canada Life Center. Marat, what's going on? Just making my way through blizzards of all kinds today, man. I'm happy to be here, though. How are you? Yeah. Well, listen, I'm great. I'm in. Uh, I'm in a far. It's a funny what a week and a couple wins can do. Um, I think I'm a perfect example. Around a week ago, at this time, I was completely losing my mind after the Jets lost to the San Jose Sharks in a game that you know really felt like they had to have. But man, two great evenings at the arena with the fans getting behind the team. The scoring droughts ending, the Jets putting up a dozen goals, and then getting a bit of a gift last night from the Chicago Blackhawks. And the end is in sight if the Jets can handle their business at home, starting with this huge game tonight against Calgary. I mean, that's the story, and it's been the story. Winnipeg has been in control of its destiny for a couple of weeks, which made those games, like losing to San Jose, just... You know, it seemed unbelievable, unfathomable at the time that a team that was front running, that had position, that had everything going for it would miss against a team like that. And then we see Calgary do the exact same thing in its effort to set itself up to get into Winnipeg tonight on closer to level ground. Winnipeg owns on to all tiebreakers. So, I mean, to set up the game, I think one of the things that has fascinated me the most just working with Julian McKenzie, our guy at The Athletic in Calgary, is how many familiar storylines they have oh. as well. I mean, you know, you go on Twitter right now, and nobody can believe how often they're giving up the first goal, and they're Bronx cheering Jacob Markstrom, who's an amazing goalie. And um, that's the emotions of the day. And right now, Winnipeg, uh, you know, it has that. It has all the good emotions going. 
Well, I, I mean, I just had Pat Steinberg on, and I listened to two hours of the post-game show last night. I mean, the calls trying to get people off the ledge last night in, in southern Alberta reminded me a lot of the feeling around here about a week ago. Now, these teams have gotten to this point in very different ways. Calgary's sort of been very inconsistent. They hadn't put many win streaks together, but they've beaten some good teams. They've been terrible against some of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. Sound familiar? And coming out of last night's game, um, directly looking, tell me if you've heard this one before, at one of their star players that's counted on a lot that didn't seem to bring it last night and was directly involved in two goals against. I mean, I said to Pat, you could literally take everything that you just said rewind a couple weeks and change Winnipeg with Calgary, Chifley with Kadri, Rick Bonus with Daryl Sutter, and no one would blink an eye. I, it, it, it is, it's crazy that we're here, how they've got there, but there are some similarities between both of these teams. And I'll tell you what, the Winnipeg Jets are going to try to avoid a similarity and play a great game tonight on home ice as opposed to what the Calgary Flames did last night. Yeah, I mean, just like you said, the script is perfect, right? I mean... Just setting these two teams up, two Canadian teams following similar paths at different times um, to, to get to this point and then having a must-win game. I mean, I know Winnipeg plays two really tough teams to end the season. I know it's got Nashville and San Jose coming up. But I really feel like, and I think most people in Winnipeg feel like, this is the kill shot. This is the dagger. This is the nail in the proverbial coffin if Winnipeg can do what it came here to do, and, and that's hold home court, hold serve against the Calgary Flames tonight, um, you know in being around the room in the last little while, everybody in that room knows. They're talking about it like a game seven, and believe me, that's what it feels like. There's sort of a playoff quality of media, um, you know, just the number of media around, especially yesterday uh, around practice as well. The intensity is increasing, and... I know as well, I know that, you know, they got two teams coming off back-to-backs. Calgary's going to be another one. This is a nice bit of advantage for the Winnipeg Jets. It's one that they absolutely need to consolidate. But also, the way that they won over the weekend with those 12 goals, getting a power play goal off of Nikolai Ehlers, uh, some lines that seem to work, a little bit of extra depth. You can make the schedule excuses But this is a team that has just a little bit of reason to feel some swagger going into the night as well. Um, And and that's what's exciting to see is because Winnipeg hasn't been a tremendously strong front runner. Look at their record in January and February. Well, here's their one more chance to sort of make good on all of that and seal a playoff spot. Yeah, um, you know, sooner or later, I mean, it was going to go one way or the other. The Jets were going to continue their slide and find themselves outside of the playoffs or they were going to wake up and find themselves again. And I said, I I don't know. I think it's maybe foolish to get too ahead of ourselves after two games. But the bottom line, Marat, is that everything that the Winnipeg Jets needed to happen really came to fruition on the weekend. You've got the scoring. You know, you move Shifley to the wing, playing with some top players. They got on the scoreboard. Blake Wheeler looked like a rejuvenated player with a little bit of extra extra rest and playing with a new look with Nemetsnikov and Nikolai Ehlers. Ehlers has been brilliant. The third line continues to contribute. Morgan Barron played a hell of a weekend. And uh, dare I say the defense has stepped up, maybe a little quiet, more quietly because of all the focus on the offensive players. But, I mean, the team really did come together and play two really good games. And, I would suggest that if they can continue to do that on this homestand, we'll be putting the whites on and watching some playoff hockey in Winnipeg in a few weeks. I mean, hey, I mean, Dom lucician has got the odds at 81%. I think Hockey Viz has 80%. Winnipeg's in control, but it has to take what it did this weekend and bring it into this game against a presumably desperate, desperate opponent in Calgary. I like, you know, you sort of go down the lines. You made it to Morgan Barron on the fourth line talking about strong performances over the course of the weekend. That's huge for the Jets. And so, you know, to to talk about that a little bit, you know, Shifley moving over to the wing. One of the things that happens sometimes with Winnipeg when Kyle Connor and Mark Shifley play on the same line is both of them take that green light to, to fly the zone when Winnipeg gets possession. You can see Winnipeg get burnt a little bit countering the other way. Well, you put them with Pierre-Luc Dubois in the middle, And now you've got Dubois covering that low support. 
And he, you know, he has strengths and weaknesses in other areas of the game. But one thing that you can count on is that he's going to offer that low support. And I really think that that unlocks Shifley in a certain way of thinking and Kyle Connor as well. And I, I really like what that line is capable of doing. I have no issue whatsoever with the star center playing on the right wing when it serves the team. And it certainly does. Bonus will point out quickly that he takes the draws on the right side as well. I like that group. Rick Bonus also found, and you know, we had that exchange in San Jose he's saying, well, I'm looking for ways to get Nikolai Ehlers more minutes. Well, that's in your control, Rick Bonus. So he took control of that. And that chemistry developing with him, Nemesnikov, and Wheeler is really quite something. I agree with you, Huss. Wheeler's jump over the weekend. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I look at that and I say, hey, that's five years ago, Wheeler. But if there's any amount of him that can bring that quality of pace, that read and react off of Ehlers and Nemesnikov and those net drives. I mean, he can continue to be a productive player in that middle six sort of role. I mean, I don't know about you. I, I tend to have faith in veterans to, to put together stretch runs in certain ways. Adam Lowry is one of those guys. You know, a month ago, where did his offense go? Where did his offense go? But he was the sort of player who I sort of believed could bring it together at this stage. Maybe Blake Wheeler's turning my mind a little bit there. I really thought that he had had a, a rough road trip and earlier than that as well. So that's an interesting one to see. Um, and then well, you know, and Neil Pionk, like, okay, let's just quickly me. talk about Pionk because I love your perspective. From where I've been sitting, the mistakes that were killing the team have been far, far less frequent. Um, he certainly has been contributing in the offensive zone. Um, it just seems like he's more back than he's been in a long, long time. Do you agree? I do agree. Um, you know, I, I don't have him ratcheted all the way up to peak Pionk, but I, I do see and I do clock sort of what feels like an increase in mobility. And I believe that Rick Bonus said that the other day in one of their practices too. The Jets have media with some mic'd up situations. And, um, you know, you, you can catch some audio sometimes. I think Rick Bonus is pointing it out to Neil Pionk. And Neil Pionk was like, yeah, you know what? I see that too. And I think that that's very much worth it, uh, worth, worth taking time to talk about. Um, because Pionk's game had gone so far off and it had, you know, for me, it goes back to that Toronto game last season. And once you get into a year and a half of sort of, you know, poor performances, he's not necessarily as confident as he used to be. So his offensive strength isn't shining as his defensive issues sort of build up. His mobility got to the point where I was beginning to question it. And I don't know if I told you this, Huss, you know, I, I, I didn't write this at length, but you know, I, I talked to Neil at uh, at a Jets practice, sort of just one-on-one -on -one away from the microphones. And, you know, I said, hey, man, you know, I, I realized I catch myself in my writing saying sometimes, like, you know, I wonder if Neil Pionk is hurt because I know last year he had a lower body injury that he didn't share until the end of season exit interviews. Um, and I wondered, like, hey, could something like that be happening again? And to his credit, I mean, imagine how annoying it is having me, you know, make the insinuation that you're hurt, like face-to-face -face in that situation. Um, just, just pure class. He says, no, no, I, you know, I, I understand, uh, where you're coming from, but that's not the case, you know, all, all that sort of stuff. And then we sort of just talk shop about, you know, how, how defense has changed at this time of year as well. And for me, that illustrates two things. One, your game has to get pretty far before I'm, I'm approaching you and saying, Hey, is there any chance that you're hurt? I know that you've had injuries you didn't tell us about before. And then two, just pure class on his part to receive that. And treat me like a human being through that as well, because I can only imagine how how tough that chat is. And since, you know, these last couple of weeks or so, I think there's mobility from him and he's getting praise from Rick Bonus. I mean, he praised his whole top four with Morrissey out the other day as well. Um, it's worth celebrating uh, as, as a short term win. Well, and, and just focusing back from the blue line perspective, we heard Rick Bonus's comments on, um, you know, from this morning after the morning skate um, about you know, the defensive challenges that the Calgary Flames bring. You know, Pionk certainly does not shy away from the physicality, but considering the size of the Calgary Flames and how Daryl Sutter gets them to crash the net, I think this is going to be a, a game where Brendan Dillon and Slamberg, um, you know, really step up and kind of utilize their physicality because this, you know, you like to have these big defensemen. To me, this is the exact sort of game where, you want the best from your biggest and most physical players on the blue line. Well, you've seen some pretty playoff-style grit plays from a lot of guys of late. And yeah. Brendan Dillon laying the body, shot blocks as well. There have been a lot of defensemen willing to dive to take passes away or dive into shooting lanes and things like that. And, and I really like 
that. If you end up in a situation where it's do it or don't, well, I think Winnipeg's defensemen are, are, are doing it right now. That's for sure. Dylan Sandberg, I want to celebrate him for a second as well, because you talk about the physicality. He's not afraid of throwing his body around as well. But oftentimes with a young defenseman like that, who's thinking about, you know, just, I mean, in his case, I mean, this is his first full season really with the Winnipeg Jets, and he hasn't been a full-timer the whole time. So he's thinking about establishing himself with these guys. Sometimes when you have opposing teams cycle, cycle, there's multiple waves, there's switches to keep track of. Now there's somebody over the defenseman's shoulder and there's backdoor opportunities and things like that. Dylan Sandberg doesn't get lost in those scenarios the way that you see other younger defensemen get lost and get beat. So it's not for me just the shot blocking, the hitting, all of that, the PK success that Sandberg has had. It's that for me, if you track just when he looks over his shoulder and the amount of awareness he seems to have against guys behind him out of his field of view, I think this is a player who's reading the game very well as well. And I, and I trust that. I trust that in a defenseman. Um, Marat, one of the other big stories that um, has uh, unfortunately been drifting for a while has been just the issues the team's had on the power play. Um, we've talked a lot about Nikolai Ehlers trying to get more Ehlers involved. And, you know, at times it's been there, at times that it hasn't. Um, I was very pleased to see Ehlers rejoin that number one power play unit. What did you think of the look with Ehlers there playing that left point and, um, you know, what they were able to generate, including a goal against the uh, Jersey Devils? Yeah, I mean, it's looked great these last two games. I know there's been like an individual power play of theirs that didn't look very good. It was the one at the end of the second period, beginning of the third period against New Jersey. But most of their efforts have been chance after chance after chance. And it's been about speed. And when it was struggling, you heard them say, well, we need to play faster, we need to play faster. And then you'd watch, there wouldn't be a lot of movement of feet. You'd see five guys more or less on the perimeter. They pass it around slowly. And because there wasn't a lot of motion, I can only imagine being one of those guys looking up and like, okay, my only options are on the flanks. Like it's only on the outside. And you saw that start to change. And I, I mean, obviously, I advocate for Nikolai Ehlers. There's so many analytics case to be made for him. Zone entries, like nothing. Um, he's Winnipeg's leader in points per minute at even strength and at five on four right now as well. So this is a quality player that I'm always advocating, okay, more Ehlers ice time. But even when the Jets power play was struggling, sometimes you'd see him gain the zone and then his next pass might be a giveaway. And there were a couple of times where he wasn't really vindicating that analytical argument to be sure and i'm sure that that frustrated some people well starting friday against detroit none of that was there and you know whether it was him on the entry shifley or connor leading that entry you know winnipeg was getting established and from there i mean Ehlers, i gotta say was leading the charge in a lot of ways attacking with pace and if you you know you read my piece about the jets offense this week three consecutive plays against detroit where he's attacking downhill from that left point kind of area, top of the circle with speed, so much speed that if you click pause at the right time, you can see everybody frozen sticks in lanes trying to guard against his shot. And then he's finding seam passes to Kyle Connor, to Pierre-Luc Dubois. He's crashing the net himself. And that's before they scored against New Jersey. So for me, you know, this combination, especially with Mark Shifley on the same unit as him, and it's Shifley who assisted with that, you know, lovely pass coming out of the corner, now they're moving, now they're speed, and now you can actually watch the thing and believe that it might score again. Uh, so hopefully that continues for their sake. Well, and, and listen, I mean, if this team's going to do anything in the playoffs, special teams are going to be a big, big part of it, as they always are. The power play, or sorry, the penalty kill has been very, very good and very consistently throughout the year. Um, but getting a good feeling back on that number one power play unit, really, really important down the stretch if this team is going to do any damage once they get to the playoffs, if they can, of course, clinch that spot over the next few games. Um, we spent a lot of time the last little while talking about Mark Shifley. I've just got to ask you, what have you, uh, what have you thought about his game moving over to the wing um, and how he's fit on in that new look line along with Dubois and Connor? Yeah, I mean, a lot of positives to say about Mark Shifley. And it's interesting the way he became a lightning rod because, and I mean, I, I used his quotes in contrast as well. Um, you know, coming out of Wednesday against San Jose, and he's talking about, I want to hold on the puck and generate offense that way. Well, you know, two seconds after that, Dylan DeMello saying, hey, we got to keep shot quantity and then Rick Bonus with the eye roll and all of that sort of stuff. He became a bit of a lightning rod. But if you go back to, to that game and the chances he created or the few games leading into it, even where he was slumping, 
Mark Scheifele was creating. And, you know, in that same piece where I talk about Winnipeg struggles on offense, well, one of the things that I attribute is Scheifele spins out of the corner, makes a perfect centering pass, and Blake Wheeler fans on it. I mean, there are situations where I think Scheifele deserves some praise even prior to this switch to wing. Um, and now that he's there and now that he's generating and there's finishing happening and, you know, you know, good for him, Blake Wheeler's finishing another on, on, on his line as well. Um, it's nice to see some offensive production from Mark Shifley. You know, the difference it makes to the team, uh, you know, as well. I mean, like the, the success that they've been able to have with Dubois covering some of those down low assignments. And, you know, he's a quality team, uh, sorry, he's a quality player, part of me. And he, I think for all of the sometimes it doesn't look like the effort is there moments um, that aggravate, it's important to remember he creates more than he gives up, even when he's giving up a lot. And that's a that's a valuable player to have on a team. Love the play that he you know gave the puck to Brad Shaw on on, on his milestone point, and and of course Brad Shaw playing or uh, assistant athletic therapy therapist for his thousandth game in the NHL. That's a nice team first play on his behalf as well. So kudos to him. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, and, and we've talked a lot about creating stuff. I mean, now is the time to make it happen, to put that red light on. And um, I mean, I've used this term a few times, but it really was a cathartic first period of the Detroit game with the, with the relief. Uh, you could feel the relief of the fan base when the goals started going in. But I mean, for it to be Shifley, Kyle Connor, and Blake Wheeler, all who had been in miserable slumps, some of the worst that they've ever had as professionals, to all have that happen in the first period. In a lot of ways, it sort of set the t stage for the rest of the weekend, all leading up to a game with um, with as much importance as I can remember, maybe of a regular season game since 2.0. And I know you and Julian talked about this from both sides. I mean, the stakes are high and the changes on both sides, I would imagine there are going to be changes on both sides regardless of how this plays out and who's in the playoffs, but it really does seem like there is so much surrounding this game in addition to the obvious race for that eighth spot. I mean, you, you can make it as big as you want to in this situation. Both teams made a headline-worthy, transformative or not, roster decisions last summer, and so, you know, out goes Matthew Kachuk, out goes Johnny Goudreau, in comes um, Nazem Kadri, Mackenzie Wieger, Jonathan Huberto. That is an enormous series of swings if you're the Calgary Flames. And to turn what had been, you know, one of the most impressive year-over-year -year improvements in, in ages into a missed playoff spot, imagine the stakes to that. And then meanwhile, you have the Winnipeg Jets taking a pretty big gamble, saying we're going to bring the same guys back, you know, we may have shopped Wheeler. We may have removed the captaincy. You know, there's all this noise around Montreal and Pierre Luc Dubois. Um, you know, Mark Shifley sounded unhappy, but we made everything in our power to sort of keep these guys content for one more kick at it. Well, imagine that the Jets miss. Imagine after that. And, you know, what I thought was just, I, I, I don't know where he would have got this, but Kevin Shevoldayoff saying last summer that, hey, before this season in which we missed the playoffs, you know, you guys were all talking about us as Stanley Cup contenders. You know, it just seemed like a pretty big swing with a quote in, in Shevel Dayoff's case. And if they if they can go from that to running back the roster to missing the playoffs, which it looks like they won't, um, you know, the, the stakes of that are absolutely enormous as well. It is mm -hmm. at the point where it's franchise altering. If, if you look at the contracts in the window windows, these are the individual games that determine, you know, probably what, what directions that some of these guys want to take with themselves this summer. Yeah, and, and listen, I mean, I, I'm, you know, kind of focusing in on the present in this game right now in these next five games and hopefully in the playoffs. I mean, I still am of the opinion that this is going to be a, a wild off season. I think there will be some significant changes and this team will look quite a bit different. And there's a lot of factors in and around that. But uh, I think that, you know, preventing what would have been, I mean, a historic fall from grace being, you know, first place in the conference in January and potentially missing the playoffs. I mean, if the Jets can can steady themselves, can get in and, and hopefully be playing some of their best hockey as of late at the end of the season, 
you know, maybe there can be some effects on just how big the changes will be. Um, by the way, shout out to everyone with us. Over 600 right now with us getting ready for this big one tonight. Um, make sure you've hit that red subscribe button because you'll be eligible for uh, a ticket giveaway. We've got a couple, uh, we've got a pair of tickets of a WST listener, Adam Douglas, who can't make it in for the game because of the closed highways. So stick around after Jeff Feinberg jumps on with us and we'll talk masters for a few minutes. We will give you a chance to, uh, Put the uh, put your gear on and get out and get behind the home team tonight in this massive game against the uh, the Calgary Flames. Um, I, it's funny. I said to Pat when he was on last segment, like, you know, what are you expecting from the Calgary Flames? And he goes, "Wow, well, I mean, who the hell knows? I mean, sometimes you'll see, you know, a team that looks like it's far better than their record, and other times you'll see a team that did what they did last night." I mean, the Jets have had some real head-scratching performances over the last couple months, but I really do feel that I'm not sure if we can even say they've turned the corner, but they got back to at least having the sort of success and doing the sort of things that helped them in the past. Um, how do you expect this team to come out tonight? And Rick Bonus has said they'd love, love a great start. I think we've seen what good starts and getting that first goal can do for a hockey club. Um, when they drop the puck at 6.30 tonight, are you expecting a Jet team in the first period similar to the one that we saw against Jersey and Detroit? I mean, start is everything. Absolutely. Against Calgary tonight, the start is absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Calgary will be a wounded, almost embarrassed team. And so whether they have their legs early or not, I bet you they play physically. I bet you that there's, you know, extra efforts after the whistle. I bet that it's an intense and combative game, even if Calgary takes a minute to get its legs going. So that demands a level of intensity from the Winnipeg Jets. The other level of intensity that is demanded of the Jets is we've seen the stark contrast between how they play when they're up and they can keep attacking and teams leave a little bit of spaces. They're trying to get goals of their own. And what happens when Winnipeg gives up the first goal or two goals and all of a sudden teams are able to play really tightly in the neutral zone, collapse five guys into the middle of the ice. Winnipeg racks up the shot attempts. There are a ton of blocks as well because they're not able to get into the inside at all times. Um, and that's been something, I mean, Blake Wheeler talked about it in the post game after New Jersey that just look at the difference. A lot of our struggles were about, you know, going, going down early and then not being able to get that goal for whatever reason. So for me, Winnipeg needs an identical early game push to what it did over the weekend. Pounce on that tired opponent, absolutely. If they get the goal, keep pushing. If they don't get the goal, and Calgary does, that's where for me it gets particularly interesting. Because as much as it seems as Winnipeg has turned the corner, they haven't, other than maybe a couple weeks ago now against Nashville, had to come back from that early hole and prove to themselves that they can do it. So, I mean, yeah, start is everything for me. Uh, you know, Marat, just before we go, as far as the actual numbers go in this playoff race, uh, a win tonight against Calgary is as close to a finishing move, if you will, to use a wrestling reference. I mean, they pretty much, I think, take care of them. What's the situation with the Nashville Predators? And is it as simple as saying if the Winnipeg Jets win tonight and win Saturday, book the playoff tickets? I mean, that's how I feel about it, to be sure. It would take something cat catastrophic. And these have been the games we pointed at for so long. You know, you knock the teams that are trying to catch you back down and good things happen. And it's worked out perfectly for Winnipeg in the way that, you know, Nashville's games and hands have been eroded away. Um, and, uh, and Winnipeg owns tiebreakers against both teams as well. So they would have to outright pass the Jets to take that wild card to playoff spot. So for me, yes, there's an element of handle your business. Everything's going to work out fine. If you look at Dom's numbers, you look at Micah, the folks that are looking at all these permutations, and they're both telling you it's something like 80% heading into the night. Well, hey, I mean, the Jets have control of their own destiny, it's, and it's upon them to seize it, isn't it? Well, it, it certainly is. And um, as I say, I was just so, so fun to be in the rink. And I wasn't sure the way things were going to go on Friday, obviously, with the game. And, you know, Certainly seeing some of the feedback that we had on the show coming out of the San Jose game, wasn't sure how where those fans would be, but man, they got behind it. The team stepped up and um, let's just hope that good things happen in threes and uh, it'll be win number three on the homestand tonight. Marat, really enjoyed this setup tonight, folks. Check that out in The Athletic if you haven't already and uh, have a great one tonight. Enjoy the game and have a great long weekend. Right on, you too, Wes. Thanks, Marat. There is Marat Atesh. Um, folks, 
a couple things. Jeff Feinberg coming up. We're going to talk Masters. Speaking of Masters, have you gotten into our Masters pool yet? If you're with us on YouTube, just click the description. It's the very first link, completely free to go in. We've got some passes to go out and play Breezy Bend with carts. And our pal Eric Johnson from TaylorMade's got a little package as well with some treats from TaylorMade for the winner of the Masters pool. So make sure to jump on that. And don't forget, our DraftKings contest is open for all you DKers. Um, $3 entry. I think we've got a max of 100 people in it. Uh, we're over half full right now, but um, tournament starts tomorrow. So make sure to get in on that as well. Um, don't forget... Jets ticket giveaway coming up in about 15 or 20 minutes. So make sure to stay with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk and make sure you're subscribed because you do have to be subscribed to win the tickets. Hit that red button. Um, big thanks to our friends at Princess Auto. I'm actually going to be out in Toronto next week at the end of this homestand for the Jets, taking in some of the Princess Auto Players Championship on the last Grand Slam curling events of the year. Really looking forward to that. Of course, Princess Auto, proud sponsor of curling from coast to coast. And the place where you'll find the best deals on the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Two Winnipeg locations, Panit Road, Portage Avenue West. And you can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Uh, our friends at Consolidated Supply are ready for spring and summer the leaders in the golf industry when it comes to irrigation as well as artificial turf and they're also the licensed club car dealer in town if you've got any need for a golf cart either new or used pop on down and see the gang at consolidated supply and they're inviting everybody out to a special kind of grand opening of their showroom at 1395 niaqua road east on april the 20th between 2 to 8 p.m. Remo and I are going to pop down for sure. We'll look forward to seeing you there. But if you haven't been to Consolidate Supply, you can do it. Check out the carts, everything they've got there, including spas and hot tubs, as well as beautiful outdoor kitchen options. It's all there at Consolidated Supply. April 20th, 2 to 8 p.m. Mark it down. We'll see you there. And you can find out more online at cte.ca. Um, let's see here. Uh, got to give a shout out to Royal sports. Hey, you, maybe you're back on the bandwagon and getting ready for hopefully some playoff games. Well, there's no better place to get geared up for the Winnipeg jets or your favorite team than Royal sports, Manitoba's number one sports superstore with the biggest and best selection of licensed team gear featuring the jets, bombers, NHL, NFL, and tons of new Jays and major league baseball gear just in time for the start of the season. And with spring just around the corner, stocks arriving daily with soccer, baseball, softball, tennis, equipment, and a huge selection of bikes. 750 Pemina Highway. And give them a follow on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops <clears throat> and sale information. And hey, if you're not lucky enough to have a ticket to the game tonight and can't get your hands on one, the next best place to be is your local Boston pizza. You know the big game's going to be on the big screen with big sound. Pick a player contest for jet goals at most BPs in the city. And obviously those ice cold schooners, world famous Boston wings, gourmet pizzas, and all the great stuff on the new BP feature menu. And hey, if you're going to stay in tonight because of the garbage weather we're having, you can always get it delivered by ordering online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's talk Masters for a few minutes. Get in that Masters pool, folks. It's in the description. And we can't get into major season without bringing in my guy, Jeff Feinberg of the Mayo Media Network and much more. Feinberg, what's up, buddy? How are you? Always well. House always enjoying this time of year. You, um, were you just out in Halifax with the fellas? How was that? I saw you in studio with Tim and did the Custies, the Masters show. I was. That was nice to get out there, do some shows uh, in the studio, in person with the boys and as a Toronto guy, yeah, it's a pretty laid back, uh, just total vibe out in, out in Halifax, clearly. Well, I'm hoping to get out there at some point in the summer. Um, uh, maybe we'll time it out. And maybe I'll see you next week for a ball game or something while I'm in TO. Where, of course, our focus right now is on the Masters. And um, listen, we knew that this day was coming. PGA Tour guys, live defectors. All playing. I mean, what do you make of all the storylines and the PGA live divide 
coming together at Augusta National beginning tomorrow? It does seem like everyone um, is on their best behavior this week. No one's really looking to stir the pot yet, so to say. Um I mean, I get all approaches, right? You could have this approach where you totally don't respect live golf and you don't think it's competitive and it has these guys totally unprepared and you want to fade them all. Or you sort of have this approach to say the sample size on how they're going to perform is actually zero. And there's so many talented guys there. It's hard to imagine that a few of them won't perform to the talent level that we know that they have. Now, maybe in a couple years from now, Hustler will be familiar with this live dynamic and how it relates to how it prepares them for the Masters, and we can make conclusions. But for now, it's a total unknown, but I'm totally expecting a, a handful of them to play quite well. I was looking at a line. The over-under on number of live guys to make the cut was 12 and a half. That's, an, uh, that's under, right? I mean, how many live players could possibly be sticking around on the weekend? See, like in theory, off the top of your head, that's a quick under. But the reality is, Huss, in some ways, this Masters can turn into a glorified no-cut event, which is something you have to sort of be worried about. It's, what, 88 guys. We have your past champions. You have your amateurs. 50 of them plus will be um, in the weekend. But, yeah, the plus monies that were out there on Phil to, to miss the cut, I was a part of. So I'm not saying I'm not confident in all of them. That's for sure. What about plus money on Bryson to miss the cut? I'm not as um, I'm not as bullish on that one as possible, although it does. It, I would lean that that he wouldn't. And I know people who are pr- quite confident that he won't. Yeah, he uh, I mean, he bought him. Like, I mean, as far as the live guys, and I don't know how much you've watched. I guess Tim's the resident live expert yeah. now amongst the Mayo Media Network. I almost lost it when he picked three live guys as oh. his three picks for the event. But um, I mean, do we take much from Brooks winning last week? Um, is there any guys we can really look and say, you know what? As far as what we've seen on that tour, they're actually in quite good form coming into Augusta. Okay, so there are a few, and I would look past all of the bigger names. Although of the big names, and I think you could single out three in in Cam Smith, Brooks, and DJ, DJ would be the one I feel like I trust the most. Um, you know, he's really got the vibe and the attitude, and having 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 a green jacket allows you to go there with the lo- uh, having a green jacket as a very top end player, I should say, allows you to go there with a sense of comfort. That um, like a lot, a kind of comfort for that, um, you know, the course will make you comfortable, though you like it, just comfortable in the level of pressure that's there for you. That seems over omnipresent with players like a Rory McIlroy. And we've seen guys like Bubba and Phil Huss in recent memory, so to say, get that first green jacket and then pick a second up one, a second one up quite quickly. Dustin of them would be my favorite of the other guys. I look to Patrick Reed, maybe Joachim Neiman, Abe Anser, but. Patrick Reed, you know, he he played in that tournament where Rory had to beat him by a a 14-footer on the last a few months ago, last time that guys sort of got together out in the Middle East. Uh, He would be my pick, but I I wouldn't count any of them out. I think Reed, uh, Anser, Neiman, um, Mito, I think we're going to see a lot of really strong weeks. Uh, what about Phil? I, I almost spit my drink out when I heard in the Masters preview talk about how he's letting the high flyers down these days. But uh, what uh, I mean, is there any magic from Phil to at least be playing the weekend? I mean, it hasn't seemed like the guy's broken 75 in two months. Yeah, I don't know. He and the in the picture last night from the champions dinner, he looks like he's a waiter or something. He li- disturbed. I don't know. What I'm happened totally to all that super coffee Phil. that he's drinking? Yeah, I'm totally out on Phil. Phil's a hard fade, but that's a that's probably the an easy one, Hassan. Huh? It's probably low hanging fruit to be picking on him right hey, now. Hey, just listen before we move on from Liv and folks, get over to Mayo Media Network, watch the Masters preview with Tim. I I, I have to ask you whether this is just another long con from one Tim Anderson, his all of a sudden adoption as being a Liv guy. I mean. For longtime listeners, I can't think of anyone on planet Earth that you would think would hate the fact that they're allowed to wear shorts. They've got DJs on the tees. I mean, this is everything that he has railed against forever. 
Is this just a big con and he's actually trying to use his cursing powers to end that tour in its tracks? I wish we had sort of pressed him on this harder on the show, Huss, but everything I do, he delivers with a straight face. <laughs> if I walked into that studio and they had a side conversation to work me like everyone else in the audience, I am I am not privy to this sort of information. I, I promise you. So I'm being worked just like everyone else. Uh, and I, I don't know. It's hard to get a gauge, but it was great to spend time with the guy. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Um, let's talk about the at the top. Three players have sort of emerged as the favorites, and then there's a gap, and then everybody else. McElroy, Rom, and defending champion Scotty Scheffler. We're looking at basically eights. So I think Rory, at least at Kuwait, went down to 775. Um, 10 to 1 for Rom, 8 to 1 for Scheffler. <laughs> How likely is it that we'll be talking about one of those three players winning the green jacket on Sunday? Probably very likely, Hustler. And I've made my bets this week, and like a lot of insane golf fans, maybe my earliest one goes back to the summer with a little Tony Finau nibble, friend of your program. Oh, yeah. When he started to win, I'm like, well, if he's getting regular wins now, all that means left is the master. So got a nice little one there, but... Yeah, I sort of wish I could blow up all my bets and maybe just bet on John Rom. I mean that. And that's my pick. You can lean Scotty or Rory. Um, but it's almost like for me, it'd be peace of mind and we can get into the bets. But all year, I do have that Fino bet, but it's like, who's going to win the Masters? Like, I don't know. I haven't decided which really, really, really good player is going to win yet. And I always leaned Rom. And now that it's here, I I'm not getting off my lean, despite not betting him, which. Probably seems ridiculous, sounds ridiculous, is ridiculous, Hustler. Um, but, hey, I don't know. I don't bet guys that short, although Jeff, I did bet some favorites. <laughs> Jeff Feinberg's with us. You can follow him on Twitter at GFeinberg17. Um, you know, as far as this tournament shakes out, I mean, you mentioned the you know the favorites. One of the big things, and I don't want to galaxy brain it too much and put too much emphasis on what we're seeing with the weather forecast. That has burned me before. But – it does look like it's going to get chilly and poor rain for a good portion of Saturday. Could have an inch and a half of rain in Augusta and about half that on Sunday. Um, should we put much into this, Jeff? And, you know, if that is the case, is it the bombers that really get a bit more of an advantage? Or, I mean, how do you take what we're expecting weather-wise to potentially affect the tournament? Yeah, it does seem like Bombers have an advantage here, Hustler. And just to expand on that, Bombers, ball strikers, we all know how important around the green is, and you just have to be comfortable. But, you know, some would say hearing Padraig Harrington on a podcast earlier today saying it's not as important as people think because it's so hard, everybody's just getting it to eight feet. So you got to be able to obviously hit those clutch par saves. Uh, bombers, certainly. We're going to have a problem here. Like, don't make a – do not fight with your wife about Saturday just yet, friends. It's not worth getting into this big argument over the weekend and then in the end she's furious with you, but you don't even get to watch golf because it's been – play has been suspended. So just, like, tread lightly when you need to remind your wife that it's all – like, just sort of keep an eye because you might end up fighting with your wife, as I said, and then in the end, there's no golf on Saturday. And then what did you do? <laughs> you know, you just created just a huge problem for yourself. As us betters, as us DFS players, it's creating a huge problem. And this thing could start on Friday afternoon, Hustler, as it does look like the players, um, you know, like Rory, like Scotty, the ones going off later on Thursday could be set up for an advantage on Friday because the early wave Thursday looks like they could be getting some wind and rain as play ends on Friday. I'll be honest. Like you, Huss, I mean, I'm in this golf muck every week. Next week, we'll be doing the Heritage. The week after that, we'll be doing a team event. I uh, but how do I, I don't have the luxury of like waiting on the, the weather. I got to make my bets. I hope I don't get totally burned by it. Not just for my bets, but I nothing is worse than a, than a, than a championship like this that sort of la lacks total wave integrity, right? Like, that's just the worst. When one side of it gets it that much worse than the other, hopefully it's maybe a half stroke, which is huge, uh, but it's something to keep an eye on. And like I said, don't 
don't like cause a fight with your wife that you're not doing that thing on Saturday just yet. Just just tread lightly there, friends. You might be able to do it and take a marker for Monday and clear the schedule of it. Like, what do you think? I, I can't even remember a Monday finish in the Masters, but I guess it's entirely on the table right now, depending on how much rain they get on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I remember a few years ago they went. I didn't even. They might have even had to uh, split tees, which was really weird um, because of weather. And that maybe we go shotgun start. <laughs> There's an idea. There's an idea, Huss. <laughs> Ideas, man. Um, be prepared for Monday. Instead of getting your wife mad at you, maybe slow roll it. Have your boss mad at you, because it does seem like this thing's going to Monday. I'll. Like, staring at it now, how does it not go to Monday? They can't make those guys play in Saturday. Um, If it's really ugly and they are out there, is there any guys that have advantage? I'm kind of leaning. I mean, listen, I'm feeling Rory right now going in. Um, he's sort of the guy of the top three that I'd like. I think, you know, being an average. The other guy that I've actually put a little sprinkle on as well not that you know I wouldn't he wouldn't have some support any it was just Shane Lowry who's like got a 65 to 1 hung up on him I mean what do you make of like if these guys are playing and it is pretty crappy out there um anyone that maybe gets a bit of a boost in your mind yeah I mean the entire team Europe Ryder Cup team really like all those muckers uh all of them Justin Rose your Tommy Fleetwoods Hatton has a horrible course history but I'm telling you, if the tournament sort of spins on its head, it could find him in a comfort zone while other guys are not happy or uncomfortable uh, and going farther down the board, Huss. There's people smarter than me, like a friend of mine, Rick Gaiman, Rick Rungood. He is all over Danny Willett this week to maybe rise oh. and, <laughs> and make a... Are we going to run it back with Danny Willett? I just say, you know, maybe it takes some placings or maybe that's more of like a top 20, but that's just to say, yeah, even the my, my friends who are like hardcore deep into the models are looking for those European mutters to, to maybe have a weekend. Well, yeah, listen, I, I just cannot wait for it. Um, Who's uh, who's on the card? Um, and, and, you know, I know you're looking, thinking Cantley. I mean, uh, I think you got a piece of Xander. I no, but he was like the first guy off. I, I don't know. I, I took Justin Thomas instead of Xander Hustler, which could be controversial. And as much as I hated uh, full swing, like as a show, I didn't even finish it. In that first episode, Justin Thomas literally seemed like he was lost. The wheat, like before the weekend of the PGA Championship, and ended up winning the major. So. No doubt I want the form. I want I wish my guy's done what Scotty's done or something. But for a player of Justin's skill set who does have some great uh, high end metrics here for Augusta, to me it's like the smallest fingernail fix where they like things just sort of click. So I got fed, fed into the ra- that rabbit hole and Sung JM 45 to 1 showing up, Victor Hovland that might seem insane on Hovland, but I am insane, and I play to the ceilings, Huss. So those well, you are, know what? I rode with you. I didn't get quite as good a number uh, on Min Woo Lee, but um, oh. that's a player that I think we're going to be talking about on Sunday. I mean, I've got him in an exclusive to a hit top 20. I mean, he's, and he can hit it far, too. I mean, you wouldn't think it by looking at him. Like a lot of Australians, they, they seem like the sand belt has a lot of comps and how they've grown up to what Augusta can bring. For them and, and the wind, he is a guy that that could rise here this week. Uh, yeah, Mayo and I touted the 150 to ones we had on him, um, maybe a, around the Florida swing when that would have started. That was something we were interested in, and just to cheer for in general. If Min Woo Lee wins the Masters, then Cam Stewart has to be Pat Mayo's butler, and that would just lead to endless content. <laughs> so that's something we all should be rooting for. <laughs> Let's go, Min Woo. Do it for do it for everyone. Um, dude, this has been great to have you on. Always fun to catch up before the majors. Um, are you guys cooking anything up on uh, Friday for assuming that it is played as normal with uh, maybe a little cut sweat? Yeah, we'd love to get that cut sweat going. We certainly will. Uh, we'd announce a time sort of when we get a vibe on how the speed on Thursday goes. But like our players' championship hustler, that was play was suspended about three minutes into it. 
we've been on a really bad run here lately with with some weather when we try to do cut sweats for the big event but we will certainly be there trying to to get all our guys to the finish line good luck pal say hi to the fellas great show this week really really enjoyed it and uh here's to cashing a few tickets on sunday night yeah all all the best go tony fee now that would be my number one i want to see you wear a green jacket pick Listen, we're both on it. Hey, have a happy Passover, and hopefully I'll catch up with you next week in T.O. Thank you. Appreciate that, Huss. All the best. Right on. There's Jeff Feinberg with us. Give him a follow at gfeinberg17, and all his content with Pat Mayo and Tim Anderson is available at the Mayo Media Network. Fire him a sub on YouTube as well. All right. We've got some tickets to give away. Hang tight, everyone. But make sure that you are subscribed. We'll probably do a a sub-only subscription uh, uh, entry for the event. Uh, But just before we do that, a big shout-out to our friends over at Little Brown Jug. Generic Lager has just launched. Man, we everyone seemed to be trying it when we were at LBJ last week for the sports trivia night. Uh, it's your basic lager, just better. Impressively standard in the best way. Light and clean to taste with a mellow flavor and a crisp finish. Now Manitoba can support local without having to move away from the domestic taste they've come to expect in a light beer. It's available in eight packs or by the can through the tap room or through vendors. And it will be available in liquor marts and in single cans starting in June. Um, don't forget, our Masters contest is open. you got to get in today before they tee off today. It's completely free. Prizes from TaylorMade and our friends at Breezy Bend Country Club. Breezy Bend is one of Manitoba's top private clubs with a championship course, top-notch practice facilities, and the best 19th hole around on their beautiful course side patio. Great men's, ladies, and junior programs. Breezy's the perfect long-term golfing home for you and your family and has an amazing social scene as well. Find out more at breezybend.ca or call our pal Corey Johnson for more information about becoming a member. And just before we get Remo in here, lots of excitement about our pal Gussie winning the Bassmasters. Well, we'll be fishing sooner as opposed to later, folks. Just got to give it a bit of time. But when we're able to do that, no better place to do that than at Aikens Lake, which is a perfect getaway for a friends or family trip or for Manitoba businesses. Just a few hours away from Winnipeg, travel's quick and easy. Reward your top customers or organize a very unique team building experience. Everyone's been working at home or doing Zooms. Uh, there's nothing quite like, like being face to face in the boat at um, just an incredible spot that Aikens Lake is. It's my favorite few days of the year. Looking forward to getting out there as well. They're over 80% booked for the summer. So if you're thinking about planning a trip, find out more at AikensLake.com. And by the way, any university students looking to spend the summer in paradise with a, a dream summer job, Aikens is still looking for a few team members, both guides and servers, male and female, to round out the 2023 team at Aikens Lake. Find out more, send a resume in to pit at AkinsLake.com. All right, let's get Remo back in here. Um, Remo, what a show today. I mean, I've just been blown away at the numbers, but I guess we shouldn't be. We've talked a lot about this game. We knew what the stakes were, and even with the loss of Calgary last night, this city and WSTers are fired up for this 630 puck drop tonight. Oh, yeah. People are fired up. I think playoff fever is happening. Also, you know, maybe the snow has kept people in at their computers here. So, um, I don't know. It's been a fantastic seeing the turnout and a lot of excitement. So, hopefully, we have some more excitement tomorrow talking about a big win. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, for everyone that subscribed to the channel, again, it's completely free. Just hit that red button. In a couple minutes, we will open up an option. Now, should we do a marble race? You want to do a? We could do a for marble these race tickets? for it. I think I think we could. People have been asking for an early <clears throat> marble race, and these are tickets to the biggest game of the year. I haven't opened it up yet. To yeah, the biggest no. game of the year, so for sure you've got a chance. But again, uh, we'll put it on sub only um, for this one because this is this is an incredible prize. Shout out again to Adam Douglas, uh, who unfortunately can't make it in from out of town for the game tonight. Wanted to make sure we put some asses in those seats and get some people behind the home team tonight. Um, So if you haven't already, hit that red subscribe button. Shortly, what we will do is open it up in the chat, and um, you know how it goes. 
exclamation mark marbles. But just hang tight for that while Remus gets it ready. In the meantime, I'll head over and check out the cool bet lines for today. Now, uh, only three games tonight in the National Hockey League. Uh, Tampa and the Rangers going at it at MSG. Rangers a minus 119 favorite. Tampa just above even money at plus 102. And, uh, oh, I believe I called this, nailed it, in fact, yesterday, Remo. My prediction of the line for tonight's game, Jets minus 30, Calgary plus 110. Jets minus 30, Calgary plus 110 tonight. Over under of six in this game. And then the Oilers are in Anaheim to take on the Ducks. Oilers, of course, a massive favorite at minus 377. Now, I promised all of you that I would not bet on the Jets to win until the end of the regular season. They've been on the suspended list. We're going to keep them on the suspended list until the end. But the guys at Kubet did ask me to fire up an exclusive for tonight. So not wanting to be a jinx, we took the win completely off the table. But if you do want to ride... <clears throat> Let's see this uh, offense continue. We've got over six and a half total goals and Ehlers, Shifley, and Morrissey all to record at least one point in the game. So uh, if you like that, it's in the Kubet Daily Exclusives. They give us a nice number on that, plus 495. That's in there under the Lock Shop Partner Parlay. Dusty's got one for the Euler game as well tonight at plus 425. And as we mentioned with Feinberg, there is so much to uh, get in on the Masters. They've got round one player specials up right now, round one betting, and of course, futures for the entire tournament. And Roy McIlroy's dropped again now, plus 750. A very slight favorite over defending champ Scotty Scheffler at plus 775. John Rahm's at 10 to 1. Jordan Spieth and Pat Cantley at 20 to 1. Tony Finau, Justin Thomas at 25 to 1. Then Xander Shoffley, Jason Day, Dustin Johnson. Uh, they got top fives, top tens, top 20s. Groupings, where you can bet just to get a group of four people. You got guys to make the cut. Pretty much everything else. Top South African, top Asian, top Irish, top lefty, top European. Well, whatever action you want, Cool Bet's got it for the Masters. Tee off is tomorrow, so get on over there. I've got a nice uh, bonus too right now. If you're already a Cool Bet customer, um, if you make a thirty dollar deposit, you get a free fifteen dollar bet from the Masters. And of course, if you haven't played a Cool Bet before, use the promo code WST on your first deposit. We'll hook you up with a one hundred percent bonus up to two hundred dollars. Um, all right, Remo, let's uh, let's get this going. Um, have we, uh, have we opened up the, uh, again, make sure you subscribe, folks, because we will put it on so it's a subscriber-only contest. We do appreciate the support. By the way, thanks for all the thumbs up today. This I think for a live show, maybe the Trade Deadline Marathon show or something like that, we got it, but for 343 thumbs up, thank you so much for, uh, for the support. And by the way, tomorrow it's going to be a Jets mega show Heading into the long weekend, um, we'll have lots to talk about coming out of this game tonight. Playoff race in the West and this huge game against the Nashville Predators on Saturday. So without a show on Friday, Ken Weeb's going to jump on with us. We'll get Billick to come on and Brandon Ruicki as well. I know Brandon's going to want to talk some Masters as well. So make sure to join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. for a huge show heading into the long weekend. Um, haven't opened it up yet, but we'll let you know in just a second when we do that. Um, and then we can figure out where we want to go to. But yes, impromptu marble race, four tickets. Now, please, folks, it, I know everyone loves the marbles, but don't enter if you can't go to the game. Um, you know, again, we're going to be sending these maybe closer to the game. We're getting them from Adam. But we do have a pair of tickets in Section 312. We just want to make sure that whoever is the winner today is going to bring it tonight, and uh, we'll obviously send them to you digitally. We'll just have to get the, um, we'll have to do it. All right. What we're going to do is not exclamation mark marbles, but in fact, exclamation mark tickets for today. So pay attention to the uh, raffle, and it's open right now. So exclamation mark tickets, exclamation mark marbles won't get you in, folks. We've changed it up today because we're doing a ticket giveaway. Thanks again to Adam Douglas for the tickets. Uh, there we go. People are listening. Exclamation mark, uh, mark tickets. 
We'll give you a second to, uh, you know, fire up the, those tickets. And again, please only enter if you're able to be there tonight. 6.30 start. Pride night. Jets flames at uh, at the rink. I'm going to try and get there early as well tonight, Remo. I think uh, it'd be good to maybe get a couple in me and the rest of the fans before the game. And, you know, normally I'm often hanging out elsewhere in the rink during warm-up. Um, but it'll be neat to see the team wearing the... Uh, Wearing the uh, wearing the jerseys, um, supporting Pride. Many of our friends in the LGBTQ community are going to be out there. Now they got a choir from the community that's going to be doing it tonight. And uh, all in all, I think great vibes with the way the organization has handled this, what they've set up for tonight, and obviously the messaging from the Winnipeg Jets as to why it was important to have everyone invested in the team in this event right now. And uh, Another great thing about her is no distractions whatsoever. It's all about this team coming together and getting the biggest win of the season to help push them into the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yeah, sorry, I lost my mouse there for a second as I opened the marbles. And I got to say, I loved the messaging yesterday from Coach Bonus, Adam Lowry, Josh Morrissey. The team is united. They're together. They're saying everyone is welcome. Uh, diversity and inclusion is important. Representations important so i thought you know the the leaders on this team yesterday uh morrissey and lowry uh dylan Demello as well um i loved what they had to say and i think they're gonna look good i think the jerseys look good i'm baiting which player i'm gonna gonna bid on us you know always get a chance to bid on uh, warm-up jerseys and sticks so yeah know, just so maybe people it would know, look good back here maybe it would look uh, good. It, absolutely it would uh, and those jerseys are going to be auctioned off in the first week of june in Pride Month with um, the proceeds going to a number of um, resources for the LGBTQ community going up. Hey, listen, just while we give your exclamation mark tickets, you got another minute to get in before we close it up. Uh, why don't we, do we have those Lowry clips, speaking of this? Yeah, I do have a couple from Lowry. We can play, definitely play those. Yeah, maybe let's go now. with eight and nine, or, or maybe seven, eight, and nine. Sure, Obviously, I'll it's a shorter you... clip right off the bat. Yeah, eight and nine were... We're good. Um, sure, you want me to rip those off here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's hear number nine. Obviously, Josh Morrissey spoke yesterday. We played some of those comments. We also heard from Adam Lowry. Um, really, those are the two, I think, leaders of this team at the forefront as this team moves forward. Um, and both of them spoke to it. Um, here's Lowry on um, diversity and inclusion being really important to him and his teammates. Diversity and inclusion are are certainly important you want everyone you know whether they're playing the game of hockey or they're a fan of the game of hockey to feel comfortable being who they are you know what they believe in um, sexual orientation things like that so I think visibility matters and you know it, uh, yeah, like I said I think we've come to the decision we're going to wear it so you know I, I think that's a positive yeah and as I said yesterday on the program uh, regardless of race creed cl color sexual orientation Winnipeg Jets need everyone to get on board for this game tonight and hopefully throwing the whites on in a few weeks for some Stanley Cup playoff hockey. One more clip from Lowry. There has been a lot of controversy about this in other markets. Talked about that sort of fueling a bigger conversation. I'm not going to comment on other guys' beliefs or anything, but, you know, sometimes, you know, with, with the controversy or things not going you know, how, how you'd hope for it to go. Obviously, you know, you'd want everyone to, you know, believe similar things and, you know, support similar things. But I think with this controversy, you know, the, the story's become much bigger. I think, you know, look at how many people are here covering it today, right? And, you know, sometimes uh, you need some more ears, you need some more eyes on the conversation to keep it going. And, you know, I, I think with that controversy, sorry, Kelly, uh, you know, th that, that's what happens. So, you know, it, it's going to continue. Uh, evolving obviously um, we want to make it feel like a welcoming place in our arena in our city and um, but you know there there's still ways to go all right there's Adam Lowry so well spoken and uh, very well said yesterday uh, here's just one more Lowry before we get to the ticket giveaway um, obviously talked about a monster game tonight against the Calgary Flames who were chasing the Jets you know coming down this stretch uh, you know Calgary and Nashville those are the two teams we're fighting for and you know it, it's uh, as close to a must win as, as you're going to get in the regular season so uh, yeah it's a huge game I, I think 
You know, we've really been preparing for it, and um, you know the last two games, the way we've gotten off to fast starts, it's, it's going to be important that we jump on them. We know they play tonight, and um, you know hopefully we can have some of the same success we've had in the first period of the last couple of games. All right, so there's Adam Lowry uh, speaking on tonight's game and the Pride Initiative that is uh, supported by 100% of the Winnipeg Jets. Get out there early tonight for the game if you do want to see those uh, those jerseys and, of course, take advantage of uh, those $6 beers that might uh, get the crowd a little more fired up for uh, when things get go. All right, we're going to close up the, uh, the uh, contest right now. Uh, you've had some time to put in exclamation mark tickets if you're able to go to the game. We're going to grab all those, and uh, we will do a little special Wednesday, biggest game of the year edition marble race for a couple tickets. And, you know, from everyone that's maybe outside of the city that's unable to get into the game, um, the rest of the crew will step up for you all. I mean, obviously, many of our Jewish friends won't be there because of Passover. Uh, but I know, like Adam, who's you know very graciously sent us the tickets to send somebody else in his place, not being able to go. Um, it's ugly outside right now, outside the city of Winnipeg, and probably still going to be there until tomorrow morning. So if you are coming in, certainly be careful on the roads. Uh, and if you're unable to, uh, hopefully there'll be some even bigger games coming forward down the stretch and into game number 83 and beyond that uh, you'll be able to attend and throw the whites on for it. Um, all right, let's uh, let's do it, Remo. Let's uh, fire up some marbles. Now, do we do a marbles theme today, even though it's not technically Friday? I was going to ask if I should do the theme. I think we kind of have. I was just going to do the yeah, normal we, theme. For sure, for sure, yeah. We cannot do a marble race without the Tristan Rivers intro for it. And this is a big one. Tickets to the biggest game of the year. So uh, let's get a little Marbles theme song on WST and then see who's going to Jets Flames tonight. Yeah, let me just pull it up. I'm getting the list in. We have 115 names, 115 people. Nice. Interested in going. So I'm going to just do the normal. I do the short version or the long, the long. You version? know, it's the biggest game of the year. I think we need the long. It's <laughs> All right, to the marbles we go. Uh, again, Adam Douglas, by the way, is in chat, everyone. So thank Adam for his generosity. Uh, unfortunately, not able to go, although he did say he's not on a very good streak right now. Let's see Jet win. So maybe this is all going to come together exactly as we need. But uh, 115 marbles. First place is what we're playing for here, and first place is going to win tickets to tonight's game you'll have to email us after the fact and remo will send you the tickets and again adam's in chat right now shout out to him for uh sending us those tickets to send one of you to the game as uh, he's unable to get into what are we doing the funnel here this is temple of steve it was requested in All chat right. by someone i was like you know what i remember temple of steve being very good so let's I'm here for do the it temple. right here good luck to everyone and listen, if you don't, uh, if you're not able to win, um, I'm sure there's still a few tickets available. Get out there. It's going to be a fun one tonight. Hope to see you all there. I will be upstairs. You can find it, probably find me around section 316 before the game and maybe during some intermissions as well. Um, all right, let's get to it. Good luck to everyone. Thanks to Adam Douglas for Jets Flames tickets for tonight. Drop the marbles on a special Wednesday. Biggest game of the year edition of WST. All right. Into the funnel we go. 
Who will be first down? These sort of uh, these sort of tracks I always find like a good start, much like tonight's game for the Jets and Flames. A good start can go a long, long way to getting the W. Uh, looks like Elliot sort of live a little lower than. Oh, there it is, Elliot, first one through. Who's coming in next? Mark Jones, PMH Dub, Running Man's in the mix right now. But Elliot with a little bit of a lead here as we uh, as we continue through the Temple of Steve. Elliot had some very nice timing there on that one. This is going to be, uh, he's going to actually extend his lead a little bit more. Rest of the, the chasers right now, I see D. Chalice, Mark Jones in the mix. But Elliot still the leader. Now what will happen here? Oh, just a perfect transition through through that. Elliot's had you know, two amazing, amazing transitions, although slowed down a little bit right now. Who will it be? I do think Elliot's still... Oh, no, Boba Jet actually, I think, has just taken, uh, taken the lead. And Larry TSG on the other side looking good. No, there's Elliot again, but it is getting tight. Larry TSG on the left. Peyton Wilding now getting into the mix. Elliot as well. There's still some work to be done. Peyton Wilding getting the bump up right now. Royal Sports is there. Boba Jet is there. D Chalice and Elliot. Everyone trying to get in first and be the winner of these Winnipeg Jets tickets. Oh, and this is the Temple of Steve. Nothing's guaranteed until you're in it. Who is it going to be and will they get out? Will they drop in? Or will they end up on the wrong side? Let's see right now. Boba Jet out. Oh, and Royal Sports wins it. The Hackman coming up clutch. Never won before. I know he's looking forward to the game. Uncle Dizzo, Peyton Wilding, Mike Weary, Casey, Elliot, who was the uh, early leader. This actually is the best one, Rio. This is a great choice. Whoever requested Temple of Steve... Very well done because there's drama right up to the final seconds with the uh, with the bin going back and forth between the two sides. Yeah, Royal Sports uh, with, with the victory. What a win. I think Gregory said this contest was banned at one point. Uh, so, well, it wasn't banned uh, I love today. This one. It's a great finish. Uh, you know, me too. Me too. And I think this is a perfect way to do it. Well, and listen... Shout out to Greg. I'm assuming it's Greg over there, one of our longest uh, supporting sponsors. Um, and listen, they are a sponsor, but they're also watching the show like everybody else. So uh, congratulations. Uh, we just wanted to make sure people will get out there and get behind the team, and I certainly know they will. Um, man, this has been a massive, massive show today, Rune. We're still pushing like close to 500. If you haven't already, I'm sure you probably have, but... Do us a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you have the opportunity, tell a friend about what we're doing here. If they're not aware and how they can get in on the fun daily, Monday to Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. or thereabouts with the podcast coming up shortly thereafter. Speaking of the podcast, we do need to get out so we can get this pod up for people to listen to on the way to the game tonight. And tomorrow, Remo, a Jets super show but we'll also talk ice and congratulations to the ice. I know I mentioned this earlier, but up three, nothing in their series. They can finish this off with a sweep, get a little bit of extra rest. And then we'll sit around and see whether Connor Bedard and the Regina Pats can win and potentially be the ice's next matchup in the Western hockey league playoffs. But uh, Rima, how are you feeling? You, you were feeling pretty positive about those two games on the weekend. Um, are you, are you in the same, uh, are you in the same boat tonight as you were for Friday's and Sunday's game when you called wins. Yeah. Yeah. This is like a, a, just a great spot here for the jets and it's going to be up to them to execute, jump on them early and look like they did the last two games. I'm curious about Calgary. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get for them. They are starting Jacob Markstrom. And I saw people in chat saying Jacob Markstrom, you know, not that great against the jets. And I did, Look at his career numbers. He's played about 20-something games against the Jets as I bring him up here. And his save percentage was 890 goals against 320. Uh, yes, 890 save percentage, 320 goals against, 23 games, 6 wins, 
15 losses, uh, two overtime losses. So uh, I think it's everything's lining up for the Jets. All they got to do is tap it in. It's like uh, when you play Mortal Kombat, the guys go in there like this, and the guys just finish yeah. him. And it's going to be up to the Jets to do the toasty, right? Yeah, well, let's see. Let's what see is? what happens tonight. Hopefully, they can just keep the goal scoring going, get to Markstrom. And I will say, the last time Markstrom played back to back nights, the second night, he had a 40 save shutout against the Minnesota Wild, which might have been his best game of the season. So it ain't going to be easy. I know Calgary is going to do everything they can to stay in this one, but a good start would go a long, long way. If you're at the game, bring the noise tonight. Maybe we'll see you at the game, but we'll definitely be back here to talk about it tomorrow on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Billick, Rewicki, Worldwide Weeb himself, Ken Weeb on the show tomorrow as we head into the weekend with a full recap of tonight. Look ahead to the Nashville game, latest on the playoffs, and of course, we'll hit the Masters tomorrow as well. Uh, don't forget to get in the Masters pool. The link is in the description, completely free. Got some prizes from our friends at Breezy Bend and Taylor Made for the winner. So get into that. Join the YouTube or the uh, DraftKings contest for those of you that like DraftKings. We still have some spots in the WST contest. It's three bucks. We'll have the top ten paid if we get to a hundred en entries. And uh, other than that, we'll talk Masters and the rest of it tomorrow. It's all about six thirty tonight at Canada Life Center. Get ready to bring it, folks. Enjoy the game from wherever you're watching it. Thanks to everyone that joined us for one of our biggest midweek shows ever today. Big thanks to Murata Tesh, Pat Steinberg in Calgary, and, of course, my guy Jeff Feinberg popping in to talk a little Masters before they tee it off tomorrow. We will see you in under 22 hours right here, 1 p.m. tomorrow on a massive show with the latest on the Jets right here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Drive safe and enjoy the game. Oh my God! Oh! Oh! Shut it down! Oh Let's go! Home! Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at WinnipegSportsTalk.com.